live from Phoenix, it's Saturday Night Hoops action as the Lopes look to extend their winning ways tonight with the defending WAC champs in the house once again. Last night, GCU put an end to the Aggies' 31-game winning streak in regular season conference games. And tonight, well, what do you know? The Lopes find themselves currently leading the WAC. Giving a lot of Lopes fans something to cheer about. Kate Longworth, welcome you to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. We're coming at you live here inside GCU Arena right here on Fox 10 Extra. Thanks so much for joining us as the Lopes are off to their best start in six seasons. Currently, they are riding a seven-game winning streak. How's that look against uh, the competition? Well, in conference play, it's pretty great when you're sitting with a perfect 5-0 and record, 11-3 and overall behind them. Utah Valley at the 500 mark, 4-0 and in WAC play. And then their next opponent, UTRGV, is 2-0 in WAC conference. And, of course, New Mexico State now 0-1 when it comes to WAC play. But... These are the Aggies, and with them, a lot of discussion ensues because we know what they have been like for the Lopes in seasons past. The WAC conference certainly runs through them. So with that, we bring in the rest of our broadcasting team, Barry Butchell, Scott Williams. And guys, last night was so much fun to watch, watch the Lopes go out there and finally have some answers for the Aggies. But it's a little tough now. We've got to, like, let that go, start focusing on today. And uh, we know the Aggies, they're going to be bringing it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, as you mentioned, Kate, these are the Aggies. You know that they're, uh, they're going to come out on fire here tonight in game two. Yeah, the Lopes have poked the bear. Yeah, they they have, been the they? best team in the West for a long period of time. You don't win 31 games straight without uh, having a little bit of, um, I guess, payback they yeah, wanted, right. but they're going to try to bring tonight so they're going to get their best effort no doubt there was a little rust on that Aggies team uh, yeah. they can play better uh, and the Lopes know that they'll have to be ready for the challenge yep as you mentioned that snapped a 31 game whack regular season winning streak dating back over two years the Aggies have been dominant in this Western Athletic Conference they uh, won the rebound battle they were very very uh, heavily uh, swayed on the offensive side 17 to 3 offensive rebounds. Yeah, the Lopes are going to have to rebound better in this basketball game. They got away with getting crushed on the glass and uh, I think the, because the Aggies had some rust, they didn't make them pay for being a minus 14 on the offensive glass. Big part of what Coach Drew wanted his team to understand coming into the game tonight. Yeah, Coach Chance said they probably had all those offensive rebounds because they didn't shoot very well, but they still had to go after and get them. Mikey Dixon was definitely a star for the Lopes last night. He, along with Alessandro Labor, leading the Lopes 14 points in the game. He was aggressive. When they got off to that slow start, they were down 13 to 4. It was Mikey Dixon that took over for that crucial stretch to bring them back and make him get within striking distance once again. Drives to the basket, uh, being aggressive, coming off screens, looking for a little short pull-up jump shots, and he was stroking the three ball. Really had the Aggies confused on uh, how he was going to attack them, and he took the most uh, advantage of his opportunities. Yeah, and I mentioned Alessandro Labor also had 14 points in the game. He moved into third all-time in GCU scoring as he had a little bit of a streaky night, but he came on strong. The Italian Stallion, it took him a little while to get warmed up, like you said, but when he did, he was big in a big way. Knocked down a pair of three-point shots in this basketball game. His pick and pop game was strong. He had some good interior passing, uh, low to high, high to low to his big fella Mick there as well. And that was his biggest one of the game. It was really tight towards the stretch, really lowered that left shoulder, went hard to the basket. There you see the numbers moving into that third spot. He's 223 away from Josh Braun. That might be a little bit of a tall task for Alessandro Labor to meet the mayor. Maybe not enough games left to be able to get to that, uh, that top record, but he certainly had a fine career here for the Lopes. Well, the uh, Lopes have beaten the Aggies three times. Who's been a member of the two of those victories? How about Oscar Freyer and the high flyer? Well, he definitely was a highlight last night. Uh, he was solid defensively all night, knocked down a couple three-pointers in the first half and put the punctuation mark on the victory with that <laughs> high handoff. And he left no doubt that the Lopes were going to win this basketball game. And they absolutely loved the reaction from the bench bunch. So we called upon here again tonight to take on an Aggies team 
that no doubt may be ready to go. And their leading scorer and rebounder, in fact, he led all scorers, was, was Johnny McCants. He was the best player on the floor, and he's coming back from the injury. And you wouldn't have known it because the guy was solid getting steals, using his wheels in transition. He did layups. He was good on the offensive glass as well. He stepped out from behind the arc, shot the long ball well. Uh, I. I I think the Lopes are going to have to figure out how to slow him down in this game. If they're going to want to have a, ch a chance to win this because Jabari Rice started, did some good things out there. You know he's going to come on after having set out for a while as well. But look at that, 13 points, 6 of 9 for the free throw line, 8 rebounds. And like I said, it could have been a lot more for him uh, with a couple more of those offensive rebounds being able to go strength to be able to gather, get back on balance, and finish around the basket. It should be another classic matchup. That's what we're expecting between the Aggies and the Lopes. Kate will send it back downstairs to you. Well, guys, you always hear that act like you've been here before, act like you belong. And of certainly that was the message I'm sure Coach Drew told his players last night. You won this game. Now you turn the page. You go back out there tonight and you get the job done. But we're all human. <laughs> So, Scott, from a player perspective, um, how do you receive that message? How do you go out there, forget about last night, and stay focused and not, you know, get carried up on that momentum? You got, you got to restart this whole thing. You got to refocus. That's it, because this game tonight means everything. Last night's game was big, but you have to defend your home floor for two nights in a row in this, during this crazy COVID schedule. So you have to put that one behind you. Wait, the positives, the things you do good, but you got to learn from your mistakes. And Lopes made some mistakes in that basketball game, that they're going to have to tighten up. So they shouldn't be overconfident to face this Aggies team. They know what they're capable of. So they lose this game. The, Lopes, the Aggies can go on and win the rest of their whack games. Then they end up in a tie for first place. They would have a chance to put their foot on this team's throat by winning this game tonight. Yeah, is it, would it be anybody surprised if the Aggies ran the table after they left Phoenix? No, I don't think anybody would be surprised. It's going to be a dogfight, and it'll probably end up right back on that court at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Now we're looking forward to it tonight and come March and all that madness. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you at the top of the hour. And like they said, to make last night's game meaningful, well, the Lopes need to go out there and get the job done tonight. How will they do it? Well, we get the inside scoop with the Lopes Insider right after this. Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. All right, we've got the game. You get the snack and the food. That's right, there's still time to get your pizza for game tonight. Make your Lopes basketball game day complete with Barrow's Pizza, a proud partner of GCU and also Scott Williams' favorite. It's award-winning pizza wings, much uh, anything your heart can desire. It's barrowspizza.com to order online or find a location near you. And now you have to follow that. Paul Coro, the Lopes insider. It's pizza tonight, but it's also a great game ahead of us. Um, thank you so much, the Lopes insider, joining us here on the show. And Paul, last night, it seems like finally the Lopes found some answers for the Aggies. What stood out to you in last night's game? And then we'll quickly turn the page and talk tonight. Yeah, I think the, the resolve of the team for things to go initially wrong and be down 13-4 out of the gates right. out of, after all that hype and emotion and build up to the game and to take that hit and still have the wherewithal to get back into their game plan and execute it. We've seen that time and time again this season, and that's probably where the game experience from the season was to their advantage over New Mexico State because they played the ASUs and the Colorados right. and had those sort of tight games that they've even pulled out on the road in conference. 
And then, of course, COVID era, gone are the big crowds and the rushing the court. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think even if that was allowed last night, that was not the message Coach Drew was sending to his team. He really wanted them, you know, brief celebration because you have to go out there tonight and do kind of the impossible, beat the Aggies again in back-to-back -back games. What did you think about Coach's message? Yeah, it's on point. You know, the celebrations are for March. That's what this team's goal is. And, you know, they... A win in the regular season is a build toward that. You know, they're trying to win a WAC regular season title, get the best possible seating for the WAC tournament that decides the NCAA tournament, and that's what the whole goal is for the team. So being 5-0 and doesn't really get you anywhere until, right. until March and then the tournament. So tonight's another night to build on that hold on first place. Next week will be another one. That's another undefeated team when they go to UTRGV next week. Let's just talk about the progression we're seeing at Mikey Dixon, the maturation. Out last night, he led the Lopes 14 points. And really, he just, I don't know, there seemed like there was something different with his play out there. What did you see with him? Well, first off, he'll acknowledge that he feels freer without the mask on. Yeah. He had that hairline fracture in December and played with the mask on his face for like a straight month. It was the same type of mask if people remember Joe Johnson wearing in the 2005 playoffs for the Suns and he had less confident shooting with it because it would fog up a little bit on him so you saw him driving more last night steps out and kind of becomes the three-point shooter that he's shown over his whole career he's a 39 percent career three-point shooter he knocked down two last night so I think that confidence is building we saw him get 17 a week ago and 14 last night that's the type of scorer he can be for this team and then also, how key was it to see the play of Javon Blackshaw Jr.? I think we start to, you don't want to take it for granted, but you just keep seeing it day in and day out. But really able to win that point guard battle on both sides. Yeah, it was a real low-key kind of dominant way he played. He had 11 points and eight assists and only made two turnovers in 37 minutes. And in that head-to-head -head battle with Evan Gilliard, Gilliard scored the first bucket of the game on the first possession, and he never made another shot the rest of the game. So tip of the cap to Blackshear and also Chance McMillan off the bench had right. some minutes on defense on him too. And, of course, we could talk Aggies and Lopes all night long. Well, we are going to do that. There's a tip-off coming here. <laughs> but let's just uh, real quick uh, talk a little bit women's hoops, too. Molly Miller and what she's been able to do with this team. Um, they fell short yesterday, but they still showed some strong defense in those first three quarters. What have you seen building from the side uh, with the women's basketball? Yeah, no shame in that loss yesterday. They lost to a 12-1 and team, and, uh, you know, they've made a lot of – progress early especially for her putting in a totally different system than, than what they played in the past and you can tell the system is is in place because they're already leading the nation and opponent right. turnovers per game that's the style she wants so you can see all the players buy all in with that especially the backcourt pierre and caldwell they're good for about six or seven steals a game alone by themselves yeah like you said a, a, a loss to idaho state with that performance you know they can hold their heads high still but you know molly milliner energy she'll be ready to go out there and get the next victory and we know that's exactly what the lopes are hoping to do tonight thank you so much paul for being with us meanwhile we're going to keep this Lopes pregame show going. Uh, what's the game plan when you're facing the very same team 24 hours later? Well, let's get the answers. We talked to Coach Drew right after this. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in a chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies. All on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. Next weekend, the Lopes hit the road for back-to-back -back outings at UT Rio Grande Valley, but then they return to action right here on Fox 10 Extra on February 19th and 20th versus Cal Baptist. But tonight, the Lopes are dialed in once again on the Aggies. So how do you go out there and take two games in a row? Well, Barry Butel got the answers from Bryce Drew earlier this afternoon. Thanks, Kate. 
Coach, uh, a big win last night. Uh, what were some of your takeaways after that eight-point victory? You know, really proud of how our guys fought back. You know, we fell behind early, 13-4, to four, and there was really never – a big run that got us back in the game. It was kind of just one possession at a time. We gradually got back in it. And, you know, it was kind of two different halves for us offensively. You know, Ali was really good in the first half, you know, as Bjorn, you know, came alive in the second half. Well, you mentioned down 13 to four, they hit those big uh, straight three straight threes and you find yourself in a hole. Timeout's called and you come back and you kind of transition into a zone and it seemed to kind of disrupt them a little bit. To, to They had a little bit of problem adjusting. Uh, you know, we were thankful. They missed a lot of shots. Uh, yeah. They run a lot of really good actions uh, against zone and, and uh, it's definitely something that we'll have to do better today. You know, if we do zone, be able to get to their shooters and contest um, a little quicker uh, than what we did last night. Offensive rebounds, when you look at the, the final stat sheet, mm -hmm. uh, they were pretty heavily in their favor. Chris Jans uh, afterwards, he was mentioning that, you know, they probably were able to go after them because they missed a lot of shots. But I guess that's maybe what a coach would say. But how did you how did you see it? Uh, you know, they definitely, you know, dominated the both ends of the floor. We, we thought um, rebounding and uh, that's unlike our team. You know, our team has rebounded well all year. Um, but again, they're they're the gold standard in rebounding. Uh, they're extremely physical. Uh, they send a lot of bodies to, to the glass and you know, we watched every offensive rebound this morning and, and hopefully we'll learn from it and hopefully we'll be able to take away some of those uh, that we gave up last night. You mentioned Alessandro Laver. He, along with Mikey Dixon, led the team in scoring with 14 points. He moved into third place all time in GCU scoring. What did you see from the big man? You know, really happy with Ali. You know, the first couple of minutes didn't go great for him or, or for our team. And, you know, he was able to, to regain momentum, and he had a fantastic stretch there when we were able to get the lead, you know, making threes, making hook shots. And uh, defensively, you know, he's improved so much this year. And, you know, he stayed on the floor, you know, 35 minutes. It was more minutes that we wanted to play, but uh, he was playing so well we had to keep him out there. The other uh, big man is Ashbourne Midgard. He had 12 points and, and nine rebounds in the game. He's hit 15 straight shots. It seemed like maybe uh, he wasn't as dominant, at least, you know, watching the game a little bit. How did you see he transitioned uh, in the game? You know, New Mexico State did an excellent job. They really uh, got in his legs, and really they didn't leave, leave him. Whenever he was in the paint, you know, they made sure that they had, had contact with him um, from the possession all the way through the rebound. So really credit them in that first half, and I thought Ash was much more aggressive in the second half kind of went to uh, you know a little bit of a different offensive game trying to be a little bit more finesse mm -hmm. uh, which we saw you know on that baseline move so I think it'll be important for for, for Ash to to uh, be moving today you know he can't just go down and, and stay on the box but he needs to be able to to move around a little bit. Siobhan Blackshire moved around he had eight assists in the game seven of eight from the free throw line what did you see from the guard? You know did a great job you know I think a big key was was our turnovers you know we didn't have a lot of live ball turnovers to let them get out and transition and Javon was the main one handling the ball. Thought he made really good decisions. Um, made his free throws down the stretch. But I mean, you, you can see, you know, from that shot and that pass, he was making really good decisions when to pass and when to shoot. Foul trouble uh, was was something that you had. To, the, the whistles were blowing pretty heavily last night. The adjustments with guys coming off the bench. Gabe McLaughlin comes in three of five from the field, but he did foul out. What did you see from him? You know, he, he's been excellent rebounding the basketball. He gives us such energy off the bench. And so, you know, we're going to need another great game from Gabe tonight. And, and, and I think, you know, with the fouls, we need to do a better job, you know, moving our feet, getting in front. The second half, they really went to drive in the basketball. And we need to be able to contain their penetration much better uh, tonight. And then uh, down the stretch, it was uh, Mikey Dixon feeding uh, Oscar Freyer. He was 2 of 5 from the field. He's, he's been in uh, now two victories against the Aggies for Oscar Freyer. Uh, a huge uh, exclamation point there late in the game. You know, fantastic play by uh, first the press break. You know, uh, we got the ball up, Ash got it to Mikey, and then, you know, what a fabulous finish. You know, it, it looks good on TV, but, it, but in person, you know, it was even better, you know, how high he got. And, um, you know, we love that the bench is into it, but, you know, coach has to make sure we're not getting any technicals there. Yeah, yeah. Um, we give those two points right back. So, uh, but we love our enthusiasm. Again, our bench has been fantastic. And, um, you know, we need their energy, you know, day in, day out. 
So here we go, back to back. You know that they're they're not going to go away quietly. Uh, what are you expecting here tonight? And uh, maybe those back to backs that the team has had have at least from a conditioning standpoint, have you prepared for tonight? You know, they're a deep team, and so they have a lot of different players um, that are really good that they can they can put out on the floor. And you know, I, we definitely think they'll play even better, you know, tonight and rebound even harder and probably pressure us even more defensively. So, you know, we're going to have to be better all around, uh, you know, to have a chance to win this game. All right, Coach, good luck. Thanks. All right, Head Coach Bryce Drew. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks. If it was hard to beat the Aggies uh, the first time around, second time around, less than 24 hours later, yeah, it's going to be a tough task. Also a tough task, talking to Andy Stankowitz when he's just a cutout. Can we get the real thing in here? We want to talk to the GCU baseball coach, and he's coming up right after this. Personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Hello and welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. Kate Longworth coming at you and it's going to be an exciting game as the Lopes go up against the Aggies. Game two tonight here, this back-to-back -back action between these whack opponents. And we'll be talking basketball all night long, but this seems like a good TV timeout, if you will, to talk a little baseball as well. And I'm joined now by GCU head baseball coach Andy Stankowitz. Always so much fun to talk to you, so thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I'm a pleasure to be here. And uh, let's just start from the beginning, right? Uh, what has it been like for you and your players these past 10 months and everything you've had to deal with going through the COVID era? And yeah. how great is it to be back on the diamond playing and opening day finally in sight here? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, you know, we, uh, it was tough for everybody, you know, COVID hit and, and you're just trying to work through it and it's been tough and uh, the concern of our players staying healthy. The university has been fabulous as they always are about making sure our guys are in, in, in a good spot health wise and then allowing us to, to get on the field and work and practice. Yeah. And so we know that and we're really grateful. Uh, recruiting has been tough as well. You know, we can't get out, we can't get out and watch um, a lot of guys we, we, we were hoping to be able to see by now and make some decisions, but uh, but it is, everybody's going through the same thing and we know right. that. And so um, you just kind of just, you do the best you can. Um, and, and again, we're just so appreciative that we're, we've been on the field and we know a lot of ball clubs around the country, they haven't been able to get in the fall was really scattered for them. For yeah. us, it was, it was kind of the same as usual. And so we feel like hopefully it, create a little bit of an edge for us, right, as far as getting our work in. So um, it's worked out It's worked out as, as best as, as you could, as, can you imagine. And you uh, mentioned just some of the opponents, what everyone's been going through. You guys, once again, coming out with a very um, competitive schedule. What games have you kind of circled in your mind or circled on the calendar that the team well, will be Well, I mean, we open up with Missouri, obviously, SEC. Um, that's going to be a, a, for four out of the gate. Um, and then we got uh, Oregon State in the Pac-12. And then we go to we go to Oklahoma State, um, brand new stadium that they have, and so that'll be that'll be pretty exciting. Um, and then we got Tulane in a bye weekend, and I I think all four of those teams preseason are in the top 30. And right. so, and then we've got U of A, and then we we got ASU on the schedule this year for two, and so that's exciting for the first time that uh, we'll play one in Tempe and one here at Brazel. Um, so I think uh, um, Pepperdine's coming here as well, and so at a conference, um, it's it's just probably as as tough as we've ever had it, quite honestly. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's just kind of the way we've been doing it. So we'll, we'll keep doing it that way. And I know we're excited. We'll have those Arizona and Arizona State games and the Oregon State game also on Fox 10 Extra. But uh, who should we be looking out for? How's the lineup looking? And who do we keep our eyes on this season? Well, I think uh, Juan Colado, uh, one of our guys that had a nice 20-game nice season last year, um, did a fantastic job. 
Um, I think you'll see him at the top of the lineup. Um, after that, we've got a lot of just uh, guys that have gotten better. Brock Burton is the guy who had a really good fall. We're excited about, about him. Um, then, uh, then there's a lot of new faces. There's a couple of nice freshmen. I think that uh, our fans and are going to be excited to watch on the field a young man named Jacob Wilson, Tyler Wilson, um, Rylan Zambrowski. Um, there's some nice players. We've got nice veteran players. Johnny Ortiz is back, Johnny Weaver. So um, we've got some nice depth. I think yeah. we're going to we're going to need it this year because of the four game weekends um, on the mound. Pearson All, Zach Barnes, um, you know Jack Schneider. Uh, Frankie Scalzo, we were uh, we returned some nice arms, so we, we feel good about that. And then, real quick before you go, some big news for the conference with the WAC expanding to five new members. What's it do for the profile of your sport? I think it really builds the profile. I think it, it extends the, the re recruiting footprint yeah. as well into Texas, and um, that's pretty exciting. All, all four of those teams that have baseball programs are, are very good. Um, Sam Houston State has is, is always been one of the top mid-D1 programs in the country in baseball for, for a long, long time. So they're, uh, they're going to be tough right out of the gate. And so I just, I'm excited about it because I, I, I like what the WAC has done with Cal Baptist and obviously right. Sac State, New Mexico State. You know, Dixie State's going to be really strong as well. So, yeah, those four new schools from Texas are great, but I feel like uh, the ones that are already in the conference are really good baseball programs too. And so um, it's, it's only going to strengthen uh, our schedule. Our, our, just our, our profile, right? Our image um, as far as the baseball uh, whack goes. And so it's, it's a huge plus. Well, it's always great to talk to you because it means baseball is just around the corner. So we will see you right here on Fox 10 Extra next month. But in the meantime, go get them, stay safe, and have will a do. lot of fun this year. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Coach Stakowitz, for joining us here. Meanwhile, it's a purple pregame party. It's a little bit different this year. Not as many people in the house, everyone being safe, but the message is still the same. The Lopes want to beat the Aggies. We'll be right back. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. <laughs> We're wrapping things up here on the Lopes pregame show presented by Nissan. But uh, I'll tell you what, we are just getting the party started. The purple party started here inside at GCU Arena as the Lopes get ready to go head to head with the Aggies. Game two tonight. Last night, the Lopes had the advantage. We'll see what happens tonight. The fans, they're ready for this. It's a little bit abbreviated crowd here, everyone being safe, but man, they want to go out there and beat those Aggies, right? Well, also looking good in the WAC, Utah Valley. They defeated Tarleton last night, 73-60. to They approved a 4-0 in conference play. You'll remember the Lopes are 5-0. Meanwhile, Cal Baptist defeated Dixie State, 89-74, the final there last night. And then the WAC officially um, set the date for the four Texas schools to join the conference. That'll be July 1st of this year. And now you'll remember the WAC, well, it goes through New Mexico State. And oh yeah, the Aggies, they are in the house tonight. The reigning champs are here. Last night, the Lopes finally found their answers for the Aggies. Can they do it again? Less than 24 hours later, taking the court again. How will it all play out? Well, time will tell right here on Fox 10 Extra. We'll be back with more Hoops Action. When going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey, David. I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service.
When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment, walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Herf Jones, by your side. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University, where Sanderson Ford presents tonight's Western Athletic Conference matchup between the GCU Lopes and the New Mexico State Aggies. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Gary Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, a big eight-point victory last night by the Lopes over the Aggies, snapping a 31-game regular season conference winning streak. But, Scott, that's old news now. Tonight's a whole new ball game. Yeah, a lot of fun last night. We had some, you know, breaking that streak. I had confetti up here in our box. Uh, the Lopes enjoyed themselves. They were you know, having a good time on the bench. But that's over. Like the Flow Rider song that was on the PA just a moment ago, and it's going down for real now. Yeah. They caught the Aggies when they were rusty last night. They poked the bear. They're going to get the Aggies' best effort tonight. How about Mikey Dixon for the Lopes last night? He, alongside Alessandro Labor, led the team with 14 points. He was fantastic. Lopes got off to that slow start down 13 to 4, and it was Mikey Dixon time. And boy, did he turn it on the Turbo Jets. Picking the ball to the basket, mixing up the inside outside game. He used the screens it was really well. Uh, he had this nice little float game going as he penetrated below that free throw line, always putting pressure on the defense. And I love this one right here. No hesitation whatsoever. Get on balance and stroke the three-point shot. Well, they're going to be facing the leading scorer, Johnny McCants, also led the Aggies in rebounding. Big, strong, fast. I love the way this kid plays basketball. He does a little bit of everything. He can play inside and defend. He can step outside behind the arc. He can get on the offensive glass. And he's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. Lopes dodged the bullet because McCants was the best ball player on the floor last night. Just a little bit rusty. You can guarantee he shaked that rust off last night. He's ready to compete. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our opening prayer. Men's basketball matchup between the Aggies of New Mexico State University and your Grand Canyon University and Lopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Katie Wood, a senior majoring in business management and a GCU dancer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we're just able to be here tonight to support these athletes. I pray for a hand of protection over all of the players, coaches, officials, and fans, and that everything done in this arena tonight would be for your glory. It's in your name that we pray, amen. Thank you, Katie. The New Mexico State hey, University you. Aggies come in with a record of three and two now, losing to the Lopes last night, 70 to 62. Their head coach is Chris Jans. He's in his fourth season, three straight WAC regular season titles, a pair of WAC tourney titles as well. Here is Chris Jans starting five tonight. Brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Same as last night, Evan Gillier, Clayton Henry, Jabari Rice, Johnny McCants, and Wilfred Lakai. Yeah, let's keep an eye on Evan Gilliard tonight. 5'10", 170 pound center, senior from Chicago. He hit the game's first basket last night, Barry, and then he got shut out after that. The combination of Dixon and Blackshear really put the clamps on him. Do you know he is going to be out for blood tonight? <laughs> let's introduce you to GCU.
Here is head coach Bryce Drew's starting five, brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Jamon Blackshirt Jr., Mikey Dixon, Oscar Freyer, Alessandro Labor, and Asbjorn Midgard. We're going to be watching the Midgard meter tonight. Yes. This is the nation's number one field goal percentage shooter, shooting over 75% on the season, even better than that in WAC play. He's made 15, count that, one five consecutive field goals. So feed the big man early and often. Get him off to a nice start tonight. The ropes are 11 and 3, 5 and 0 oh in the whack. Head coach Bryce Drew in his first season. The assistant coaches Jamal Walker, Ed Schilling, and Casey Shaw. Director of player development is Wine Lightfoot. Director of recruiting is AC Moyi Kobu. Director of video operations is Peyton Bruno. Strength and conditioning coach is Jordan Jackson. And the athletic trainer is Jordy Hackett. Time for the Sanderson Ford three key. Sanderson Ford, the best play in a new Ford, is at Sanderson Ford. I need a new Ford. I'm all those F-150s. Mind yeah. your business. Mental preparation is going to be key tonight. You can't get caught up in the celebration of last night like I was over here throwing yeah, confetti in the air. Come back, get, get locked in on the game plan, be ready to start. Don't fall into a big hole like they did uh, in game number one and build for this. This is a deep bench to look at the Lopes have. All those guys on the bench, if they didn't get minutes last night, they might be ready to get minutes tonight because there'll be some winded players in this back-to-back. -back. They played hard last night. Those starters, we're going to need some blows tonight. And what we do today will send shockwaves into the future of establishing what this program is going to be about going forward. This will be huge for the players' confidence. It will be huge for recruiting. This will be huge to give them momentum going into the Western Athletic conference tournament come March. They have to go out there and compete. They don't necessarily have to win the game, but they have to be competitive and match that energy that the Aggies are about to bring to the floor. Lopes handed the Aggies their first conference loss in over two years last night, snapping a 31-game winning streak. That's old news. We're about ready for game two of this matchup. It's underway in Phoenix. It's won by the Lopes. The officials are Casey McClellan, James Ford, and Juan Corral. Inside, Labor, right hand. Ooh, got a hand on that. Yeah, he got a hand on it. The ball slipped down his, down his, out of his hand down towards his wrist because it never got any height. He shot it right into the bottom of the basket. There he is in their black. Lopes going to their white. Long distance again, off the mark. This time, Freyer. Did a good job underneath the bucket, clearing his man out. Yeah, really good box out, threw his man to the floor, and then he, he had so much courtesy, he helped him up off the floor. Step back off the mark by Labor. He's had two errant attempts here early on. I like him being aggressive. I thought he got off to a slow start last night because he was trying to defer to some of his teammates. Can't try to drive baseline, shut down, and underneath, nice bounce for Lacan. Really good cut away from the basketball. Comes right into the heart of the Globes defense. Don't want those guys living in there. They'll feast around the basket. Very long, athletic group. A lot of movement by GCU. Mikey Dixon had 14 last night. Step back. Blackshire, far side. Bounce pass into Waver. Down underneath. Midgard, no doubt about it. Oh, beautiful. Love the low pass. And Biggs really working well together in the Midgard meter. Click off number 16 as Midgard, no doubt, with the two hand stuff. Good recognition. They want to double team Labor, get the ball out of his hands when he's got it down on that block. He does such a good job finding his fellow seven footer on the weak side. Rice, McCann turns. McCants. Near side, Jabari Rice. Tough to keep, bounce pass, McCann, nice move. And by the Eggins. Yeah, another nice little roll away from the ball and yeah. slipping behind the defense. in front of the Aggies bench. Looks inside, up over the top. Midgard, swarm there, kicked back out. Dixon, open look for three. Off the mark. Rebound picked up by the Aggies, Clayton Henry. I really like that ball movement out of the block, though. I think I'm 
labored down there on that block. A little bit of body contact. I don't think that's going to be shooting, though. It looked like he was passing that ball away. So baseline out of bounds. Look at this graphic here by Midgard. He's made 16 straight field goals. Leads the NCAA 75.5% shooting. And it's probably about 78 or 79% if you just count the five whack games. Henry. One by Freyer. Nice. McCants. Far side. Gilliard. Looks left. Gets some instructions from Coach James. Backs up. Back behind him. Lakai for three. Good. Whoa, Lakai. He's doing a lot of damage tonight. He's got a couple buckets inside. He stepped outside. Knocked down that three-pointer. He had a couple three-pointers during that 13-4 run that they had last night to start the basketball game. So, Globe's better figure out how to put a handle on this kid and slow him down. Two of four beyond the arc last night. Nine points for Lakai. Inside the Midgard. Turnaround off the glass. What do they call? I think the guy Gabe McLaughlin and, and McCants wrestling on that weak side, battling for offensive rebound position. I think that's going to go against McCants. But look at this one against by, by Mitgard. Good hands down there on that block. Knocks down his 17th consecutive shot. My goodness. Kid's been on fire. You can throw him the ball just about anywhere. It doesn't matter if you got a guy draped on around his waist or up over his shoulders. He does a good job securing that basketball and then getting back on balance and, and going and keeping it high. That's the key, keeping it high and then going and finishing the play. So they're going to count, they're gonna count that basket? Yep. Yeah, count the basket, and then it uh, looks like it might be a foul on New Mexico State. Well, well, well hold on, I don't know. The officials are getting together talking about it. It's a new crew here. Okay. Well, I had high hopes. I did. I, I yeah. had high hopes. I, lo I love the face mask of that one official there with yeah. the bald head. He's got, it matches his uh, yeah. the stripes on his jersey. You're telling me? That is, <laughs> that's coming out strong. Not that only does awesome, it, man. it's like almost size for size, the yeah. purple size stripes, too. Yeah. Are, you know, width. He just, he just ruined a he other shirt. I noticed he, he, he didn't bring two others for his buddies, though. He's, oh, <laughs> he hey. only brought the one. He's like, can't look as cool as I do over here. <laughs> All right. So they get they get, they get get wrestled in there as the big guard shooting the ball. So I think, I think the ball's out of his hands. Yeah. And you can see, look like Gabe. Gabe locked his arm down. I had a guy that uh, played in college with J.R. Reed was famous for doing that, locking the guy's arm when you start wrestling in there. And then it looks like the defender's holding you when you're the one actually holding him. And then uh, he would always get away with it. So Gabe, Gabe, Gabe McLaughlin <laughs> stole a little page from uh, J.R.'s book from 30 years ago, and then Midgard knocks it in. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with here at the end of all of this. Brought up J.R. Reed Pryor. Yeah, J.R. is a good a dude. He's a good dude. I, I, I always liked Jay. He was fun, fun guy to play with. Had one of the deepest voices I ever played with. You can always hear the, very the calls. Like. Yeah, really. Could, could have been a very white impersonator for sure. Booming voice. All right, folks. And the beat goes on. Ready to go. What if they decided? No, no. Uh, no foul now? That would be the best thing. Just say no foul, score the bucket, let's play let's ball. Let's play ball. Yeah, let's uh, let's play some basketball because that's what everybody's here to uh, see. While everybody's at home watching, it would be a little basketball on the court playing between the two teams rather than to see what they're seeing right now on the screen. You know, I, would I maybe take this time, and I don't want to go back to last night because we're going to have another good one here tonight, but. You know, one thing I can already tell, the Lopes maybe not so intimidated by the Aggies tonight right. as they were last night. Yeah. They were a little timid. They, right. didn't, they didn't mix it up. They didn't get into, like, you know, that, that McLaughlin getting down there, holding and scrapping and getting on that off, you know, getting that offensive position ready to play. That's how I feel right now. You know, big guard down low, labor down low. A lot of shots from the outside last night, not really attacking the basket. Tonight seems like... They got the confidence at least to go inside. Maybe that's coaching staff getting on and watch the film and said, hey, we got to be more aggressive to start this ball game. Oh, my goodness gracious. At this point, I, I would I'd wave it off like you said. I, you know, 
Sure. Well, I mean, why not? It doesn't hurt either team. Is that the Jeopardy music yeah, that you? Yeah. <laughs> May you rest in peace. What a great show that was. I had a friend I went to college with that was that cleaned up on that show one time. Really? Yeah, yeah. So they, they won the final Jeopardy question. I can't remember what the, what the question was, but the answer was the Pentagon Papers. Flagrant one on McCants. Really? Hmm. Curious. Yep. I think at the end of it, it's probably justice because it looked, yeah, like, it looked right? like McLaughlin was the one doing the hooking and the holding underneath the basket here, and somehow McCants got whistled for it. So, like I said, let's go. Don't here call go. anything. Basketball. Just give him the ball and let's play. And let's as, play. It, as it turns out, the score didn't change because he missed both free throws, but they are going to give the ball back to the Lopes, so that's a little bit more of an advantage for the Lopes to get the ball back after that, that ball. That'll even out. I mean, we've got 37 minutes left to play. Freyer from the corner off the mark. Aggies bring it up. Price. High by Dixon. McNair's there. Takes it back. Off the glass high, and it drops. Yeah, I like McNair. Uh, we were talking about him in our pregame meeting at 270 pounds. He's got good legs. He made a couple free throws last night. He uses his size real well around the basket. That was a good little screen and roll. Got a bounce pass, which is always a little tougher for a big guy to be able to pick that one up down around his knees. Blackshear blows by Gilliard, doesn't go. Well, fans here wanted goaltending. Uh, they thought that they got some uh, interference around the basket there. Blackshear put that one up a little higher on the basket and hung on the front of the rim for a while, and one of the black shirts came down and knocked it off. Was it still in the cylinder or not? To be determined. He knew that was his fault. He threw it really low. Look at this one more time. Is it in the cylinder when this ball gets tipped out? Yes, I'd have to say a good portion of that basketball is still over the cylinder. You can't really tell from this angle. But from the side angle there was the one that you really could tell. Yeah, even that one there. You can see that ball was not going to go in, but he got to it early and knocked it away. You can't Lasher. do that. Corner, Dixon. Drive, step back. Two, short. Pulled down by Lavery. Oh, wow. Nice. We didn't get our first offensive rebound to the second half. That's wow. good to see Lavery getting on that old glass. Sure. Pulls back. Baseline drive. Mid guard on McNair. Right hand. Big and in. What, I'm losing count now. I'm up the meter. 17. 17 strike for the big guy. Nice little shimmy shake there with the, with the shoulders. Thought he was going to come back to the left hand. No. Mid guard so strong with that right hand finish. Jason King in the game for the Aggies. I gotta write this down. Gilliard. 17. Off the mark on the three. Sean Miller Moore. Miller Moore. Yeah, he's yeah. gotta have, gonna have a big game tonight. He gotta should have a lot him. of energy. Oh, look at Labor for three. Boom, bam. I like that. Get the ball off the glass, push it down the left side. Don't get your initial break, but then you come back to your trailing big for your secondary break, and he knocks it down to tie this game up at nine. Gilliard near side, bounce pass, McNair. Back out. King. Lakai. Back to King. Inside to McNair. Looking to move on Midgard. A little difficult. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Gets it off at the buzzer. Off the mark. That's shot, a shot clock, clock violation. violation. There. Yes, you nailed it. Remember, they had a couple shot clock violations last night. In fact, they stopped GCU on one of their fast break opportunities because of a shot clock violation. But you got to love that by Alessandro Labor, the Italian stallion, tying the game up at nine. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. 
dealerships turn to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. GCU Basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herb Jones. By your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. The Lopes and the Aggies are tied at nine. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, obviously the Lopes went out there and did the job they wanted to do. They went out and beat the defending WAC champions, but the celebration was short-lived because win or lose in these back-to-back -back games, you've got to find a way to have a short memory. As Coach Drew said, this format changes the whole approach to how you prep for a game, especially on day two. The whole process is just really sped up. He said uh, there's not much sleep for the coaching staff right after the game. Hitting the video, watching the latest film, trying to break down what New Mexico State was able to do last night and how the Lopes can go out there and attack that today. He said you really just had to let go of everything, and he wants the players to stress that recovery time, how important it is. But he was very clear with his message. Yes, you got the job done, but it's not time to celebrate. But I don't know, guys. Get the job done tonight. I think we can celebrate a bit. Oh, yeah. A bit. Cool in the game. <laughs> Absolutely. Late last night. Oh, watch your Oh, my goodness. A little head error, actually. A little sucker. In the corner, McMillan. Nice payoff. I was a little surprised McMillan didn't shoot the first time he had it, but he just got in the game, and that's always never a good sign when a guy catches it and shoots it the first time. But then when he threw it, when uh, he got the ball back from Blackshear, he's like, okay, you want me to shoot it? I'm going to shoot it. Two for five. The Lopes are from three point range to start this game. Much better shooting than they did on the evening ago. That was a wacky sequence. And to Tillman, he's fouled. See, I like Tillman. I can't believe they he went from the being the leading scorer, oh, bringing him off the bench, pulling off the forearm, yeah. off of someone's hand. Then Chance McMillan gets it back, says, "Wait, well, I'm going to give it to you, and then step behind the three-point line, get back on balance, and knock it down." I like this young kid right here. You know, with uh, Jaden Stone banged up with that knee injury on crutches, he's going to get a lot more opportunities here in the, in the next couple of weeks. Well, help there. Laver's got two personal fouls. In the ball game for the Aggies, number zero, C.J. Roberts. C.J. Roberts checks in. Jabari Rice out. King out. Clayton Henry back in for the Aggies. C.J. lost the, the headband he was wearing. I like Tillman. 17 yep. points a game, comes off the bench, took it in stride, still came out here, competed last night, was off to a fast start again tonight. Had four points last night, all from the free throw line. One point Lopes lead early on. So glad he could join us here from GC Arena in Phoenix. Driving Sean Miller Moore. Doesn't drop. See a black. In the paint. That is a good job. You know, this is the number one defensive team in the nation, holding opponents at 36% shooting. He really showed on that position. They really made him play. You nailed it, Barry. A sea of black jerseys around that basketball. Gave him nothing easy inside. McNair. A little while. Clayton Henry. Into McNair. Seven. Six. Five. Gonna get it off. Tillman does. Not there. Pulled down by Midgar. Big guy going down there, eating and chewing some glass. I like that right there. Black shirt floater. Good. Yeah, why not? Got a little drag steam there. Gives his buddy a nice little high five when he retreats back to court. Thank you for helping me out. Just rubbed this guy off just enough, created enough space to be able to get down there around those WAC numbers. Numbers. Letters. <laughs> Tillman, corner. Gilliard. Off the mark. Rebound. 
Little Mac getting in there, uh -huh. grabbing some ball boards. Sean Miller Moore to the bucket, reverse! <laughs> that was nice looking. That was like the way old uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dr. J do it. Go from one side of the bucket to the other, hang in the air, put a little flippy English on it, spin it off the glass and in. Nice fast break for the Lopes. Five for the last six are the Lopes. They're up by five. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back. The Lopes up by five over the Aggies. Blackshire and Miller Moore hurt from here. I love this one by Blackshire. Just that little rub off of uh, the backside of mid guard. <laughs> he gets in the lane, gets that little floater, and then I love that one right there. Boy, I wish I was a player like that could just sneak by on that baseline and float. Nice little leg action as you're going through the painted area and flip that thing up off the glass. That would have been so fun. My dreams. That's how I used to be able to do it in my dreams. I used to idolize Dr. J. Yeah, Dr. J. You know, I wanted to be a player like that. <laughs> have nearly athleticism to be able to play like that. They call me Tank. <laughs> I stay close to the ground. <laughs> How about Miller Moore? You touched on that earlier. Be great to have him kind of be heard from tonight. He had uh, didn't come up with a point last night in 11 minutes. No, so but, the, but the bench is already good. You brought that up because I was throwing papers at our buddy Jared over there. Like, what's the bench done? Miller Moore with that oh, driving layup and McMillan off the bench with a three-point shot. They got five off the bench already. with the 16. That's a good bump early in this game, giving those players a lot of confidence. And McLaughlin, he had a couple last night as well, and a big offensive rebound and put back, so. Oh, man. McLaughlin's called it before that. Now Chance McMillan. That's a fourteen foul. Back in the ball game for the Lopes. Number three, got to slide those feet. start getting those hands into the, the uh, offensive player, the ball handler. That's the official's going to call that every time. Midgard in for Labor. Labor's got two personal fouls. Chance. Robert. Pushed out. McCants looks for three. That's off the mark. Good hustle by Tillman, but he just can't corral it. Did you see Tillman? He must have covered 35 he feet did. on that uh, offensive rebound attempt. I mean, Midgard looked like he was going to cleanly pick it up, and then look at Tillman, just like a, a, a cannon. He just kind of lost it off his fingertips there. That's only how I said it's like, we had a guy named Steve Bucknell I played with. He always wanted to dribble the ball and pick it up. Go grab it with two hands and make sure you secure it. Drive me crazy. Miller, far side, Blackshear. Back up top, McLaughlin. Ooh, close. Like Henry almost hooked up. Get away there. Got a hurry, too. Blackshear throws it up, off the mark. Picked up by McLaughlin. Back out. Blackshear. That's what he does. 9.7 wow. wow. awesome. rebounds of the team going in there and getting that O board. Top of the key. Oh, I think they got the big fella Midgard down there in the paint. He, wanted, he was hoping to be able to stab into that painted area there just, just to duck in and receive that ball, that ball rather from Blackshire. It just got uh, Tillman wrapped him up a little bit down inside, a little too much. 
three offensive rebounds. The Aggies don't have one. Taylor two games early on. Kick back out. Clayton Henry looks for three. That's short. Pulled down by Midgard. Oh, he's good on that glass. But nice job with the white jerseys that time. Creating no opportunities on the offensive glass for the black shirts. Lothan. Kick back out. Sean Miller. Ooh, careful. Gilliard almost stole that one. Stop. Pops. Good for Blackshirt. Well, you reach out and teach. Blackshirt says, you want to go for the steal. You don't get it. I'm going to make you pay by putting it in uh, attack mode, going to the basket, knocking down my third and fourth points. Quick ball movement in the corner. Tillman. Good. That's a tough matchup for Midgard, having to cover Tillman all the way out to the three-point line. That's almost not fair. Then the other end, look at Midgard, try to put him in the torture chamber and pound him on the other side. McLaughlin drives. Open a harm. I'm over here running my mouth, and <laughs> my guy gave McLaughlin sprinting down that left side. Got that basketball, no hesitation. Look at this. He just he, he faked the dribble handoff, turned the corner, full defense, and just went hard to the right. Look at that. Take the contact, put the ball off the glass softly, and knock it in. Got the Patrick Mahomes haircut. Who you pulling for in the Super Bowl, by the way, Barry? Mahomes or Brady? Please don't say Brady. I guess I'll say Mahomes. Yeah. On, they, say they do call you the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Upset you in any way. Shape or form. Nice three-point play. Lopes on a nice little you know, mini spurt here. Outscoring, uh, it's been an 11-3 run here. Taking a nice seven-point advantage. Gantz has two personal fouls. He's active on that rebound, and they pick it up. Clayton Henry. Tillman quickly in the corner. Lakai off the mark. Tillman again. His name's being called quite frequently. Gets it out to Jabari Rice. Tillman's a stud. He's just out working the guys in the white jerseys right now. I love that kid. Driving. Rice. High up the window. Drops. Jabari Rice. He's so good. I mean, that first step is just next level. He got one of the best defenders in McLaughlin on him, and he went by him like his feet were nailed to the floor. Dixon. Freyer. Moves right. Stops. Pops. Short. Lawson tried to get it. That was Freyer's shot last night. He knocked down a couple of those threes in the ball game. Look at Gerald Tokes sighting here on the court. Got to play last night. Yeah, we get a chance with a nice little jump shot there again. Is that right? Yeah, the, we want to show you that. Uh, Punctuation mark last night that Frere had at some point in time in this game. Nice timeout that time by Bryce Drew. Yeah, and in the uh, lead Man, has been narrowed to just two. There you see Gerald Dokes. Transfer. Jacksonville, Arkansas. Well, yeah, 11 points in his only other game with the Aggies. Yeah, he just came, like you say, just got eligible. And can we go back? I want those guys in the truck to cue up that dunk last night by Oscar Frere. Just put the punctuation bucket. We had the two, two big guys that just scored buckets inside, and the Lopes were getting pressured, and Mike Dixon with his head up does a nice job getting that ball over to Oscar Frere, and McCann's just tucked out of the way. He's like, I want no part of being on the other end of that poster. Freer hasn't been heard from as of yet. Five minutes on the court. Folks do have eight bench points. The bench is going to be big. We talked about that being one of the keys to the game. You know, this guy's going to have a little bit tired legs after playing last night. Jump shots may not fall. And you know, have those guys pick up that energy and scoring. Blackshirt stops, pops. Good! Oh, that's one guy that always has energy. It doesn't matter if he plays. 35 or 39 minutes. He's always ready to play the next slide. And this is what the Globes did last night till they went to that zone defense. Really confused the Aggies. They come out of that timeout and first time down on defense, they put that little 2-3 matchup zone on. I called it a 1-3 last night, but it's really a 2-3. Oh, that's the turnover. That's two errant passes by Jabari Rice. Over the top of the Down low, mid guard. 
doesn't go. Oh, the big guard meter will have to reset at the zero. He yep. had 17 consecutive, and that's the first one he missed. Turnover on the Aggies. In the ball game for the Aggies, number three, Evan Hilliard. Hilliard comes in for Roberts. Also for the Aggies, number 24, William Hilliard. All right, I would just correct it. I thought the Midgard meter was reset after 17 consecutive field goals, but I have been corrected over here. It was 18 consecutive. I wonder if that's a Western Athletic Conference record. I'll have to check Whoa. on that. Looked out by Rice. All right, we got a timeout on the floor. With the Lopes up 23-19 over the Aggies early on. They definitely looked a little bit more poised on the court against the Aggies here tonight after the Aggies came out and kind of punched them in the mouth with three straight three-pointers to open up a 13-4 lead before the Lopes eventually clawed their way back into the game. But Asborn Midgard, as you mentioned, 18 straight made buckets. Yeah, he's doing it again uh, tonight. I mean, and last night, I thought they were maybe a little bit nervous, intimidated by this Aggies team after that 31 consecutive games, but not tonight. They have absolutely been uh, aggressive at taking the ball hard to the basket. What is Blackshear Jr. with his drives or feeding the big guy down low? But they've been uh, a nice little tandem, maybe, whether Blackshear's getting off a little screen or he's feeding his big guy down low, but they're working well together. Six points apiece for the duo. The sweet play of the half is brought to you by Sweet James, and we saw it early on. Scott, you like this move for sure. Oh, yes, man. I wish I could sweet. do that. That is as sweet as it gets on the basketball court right there. I think in my pro career, I might have had one of those where I was able to go in reverse and really? spin it up off the glass. Seriously? Yeah, it was against Indiana. I remember it very, was it Indiana? Or, now I don't remember who the team was, but Reggie Miller. Big Dog. I was playing in Milwaukee, and Big Dog gave me a pass. I challenged the outside three-point shot, continued to run down the floor. He gave it to me. I had somebody coming to get me, and I ducked down underneath the basket, took it from my right oh, to my no. left, and spun it in. Still remember that like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Who would I, I just didn't have that the, the air underneath my body. You know, I covered some distance, yeah. but I was, you know, kind of low to the ground. Like, you could have slipped a phone book up underneath me, but that would have been about it. Anything larger than that would have tripped. I'm sure you should tell it a little bit differently. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to keep it's it like real. A... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard enough to believe that I even been pulled off the moon to begin with. I got to at yeah, least make it real it at the far, end. Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. You're going to break. <laughs> 2319 early on. You in the lead. This is just the second conference matchup for the Aggies. I wonder if the Lopes on defense will go back. The Aggies have gone to a little zone defense here, a little matchup we'll zone you. defense, right? Yeah. <laughs> Taste of your own medicine over there, uh, Coach Drew. Breyer, Laver is open. Off the mark, Midgard climbs up and grabs it. Fresh 30. What we got here? I, I, they reset the shot clock uh, incorrectly. They did oh, that once yeah. last night. Instead of putting 30 seconds on the shot clock, they got to remember to put 20 seconds 20 off an offensive it. rebound. So they, uh, they corrected it now. They took the three seconds off. 17 to shoot rather than 27 to shoot. Black shoot. Labor. Dixon, got a little bit of room there. Off the glass. Oh, wow. Looks like McNair is going to be called. Doesn't drop. Mikey Dixon is a different player than we saw in the first eight games of this uh, season. Uh, in Western Athletic Conference, he has realized that there's not a whole lot of guys that could stop him when he is determined to get to the basket. And he's putting his head down, and he's not afraid to draw that contact and finish around the bucket. For every three-point shot the GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship 
For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Fourteen points, four assists, six of twelve from the field a night ago from Mighty Mikey Dixon. Drains both of those. Yeah, they fall back into their zone defense. Gilliard moves right. Nice, quickly into Lakai. Lakai, their side for the three-point attempt off the rim. Henry. Blackshire down low, Midgard. Back his way in on McNair. Battle of the heavyweights. Big right hand in it. That was some heavyweights right there. It was like the brown gargantuan against the green gargantuan. Back in those old 70s monster movies down there. A lot of bodies banging down there. It was about 500 pounds of beef down there. Aggies haven't scored in about two and a half minutes. Wolves are in a 6 0 run over the last two. In the corner, three. That brings out. Midgard. Midgard doing it on both ends. I see a big fella working hard out there. Four off, four rebounds rather now for Midgard. Bounce pass from Midgard into Dixon. Mikey Dixon is trying to get that contact, get back to that free throw line. Sometimes you just got to go in there and put more power. Just say, I'm going to dunk this one. You got, the, you got the leaps to be able to go in there and throw that thing down. Hell off the mark. I think that shot. I think that shot got blocked, Barry. I think the defender closed out on the corner and got a piece of that Another ball. Piece of the ball. Midgard one more time. Look at these two big guys, McNair, Midgard banging down there. I'll give you a shoulder. I'm going to give you a chest. And here's another shoulder for you. Here's a forearm. <laughs> and look at it. And I like that little stutter step. Froze McNair just enough to be able to squeeze it right up over the top. Here's a jab and an uppercut. That's the basketball I like. I don't like some of the stuff I see in the NBA anymore. Nice. <laughs> I see plays like that in the NBA anymore. Who was that? Rice? Yep. One more time from outside? Yeah. Just when you Step think back. the Lopes are going to pull away and, and try to take this thing to double digits, Rice with a big three to cut the five. Luxure. Labor. Looking to give it to Freyer. And he's swarmed by Clayton Henry. Labor is going to maneuver his way back into the paint. Big right hand and it drops into the bucket. Oh, that's good footwork right there. Took the ball all the way out from the white semicircle down there to the block and got a four footer right in front of the rim. Good ball handling, good footwork, good patience. Wonderful job by Labor. M&M over at the uh, scorer's table. We got McMillan and Miller Moore. Three in. Nice feed. Oh, that that was a good interior passing right yep. there. Coach Jans really has an unselfish basketball team. They really share that basketball well around the bucket. Midgard moving screen Man. didn't need to do it either. I think he would, he wanted to roll to the basket so quickly. He wanted to set the screen and roll, and he just wipes out Blackshear's defender. That's a tough one for the big guy because you're, you're taught. I'm supposed to hand it off and I'm supposed to roll hard to the basket, but you got to let that defender clear before you start moving like that. Glothen comes in for Midgard. Midgard second. Yep. A little more in, McMillan in, more by your side. Under four to go, GCU right now on top by three over the Aggies here in the first half. Taking a look at our USAA athletic calendar. GCU athletics in action this week in cross country at UNLV on Monday. Women's basketball hosting Tarlington back to back games Monday and Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, men's tennis at Arizona State while women's soccer team faces off against the Wildcats right here at GCU on Thursday. And coming up at the half, I will have a chance to check in with Coach Drew, get his thoughts on how his team has responded in this short turnaround going up against the Aggies, plus a great feature ahead. We're going to take a look at the student managers. And guys, I know you know, they put a lot of time and effort in. It really takes a village here with this basketball team. And these student managers are doing all that they can, carry the chairs, the towels, the water bottles, trying to support the players out on the court and you know it's the little things that can make a big difference in a game. Yeah, they do everything, the, um, the managers. 
Something to uh, note real quickly here before they walk this ball to the floor. TCU has a four-point advantage of points in the paint, 16 to 12. And they won that last night, 28, uh, 26 to 18. So off to another good start at getting that ball inside and scoring in that painted area. Rice near side, Gilliard drives. Off the rim, rebound. Well, it was Chance McMillan that had that ball and it got it knocked out of his hand. It was a foul down there on Chance McMillan a couple times now getting on that glass and helping out the bigs. Richard Rice. Well, you can tell that the message was received by Coach Drews and his staff to these players to not allow the Aggies to dominate the O boards the way they did last night. Picked off. Travel. Oh, Lopes dodged the bullet. They there. sure did. <laughs> they should have learned their lesson from a night ago that these passes have got to be intentional. They have got to make sure. Yeah, they, the Aggies do a good job, yeah. like you say, Barry, playing that passing lane, getting a hand in there so long. They don't really have to give up really, you know, defensive position because they they stay back and use that hand away from the basket or closest to the basketball and extend that one there, and still keep it in a good eye on their uh, the offensive player that they're going to defend. They get a lot of deflections and a ton of steals. Blackshire spinning around. Everyone guarded heavily. Clothin in the paint. Big right hand. Not there. Rebound. Pushed out. It'll be Aggies basketball. Well, I like that one by McLaughlin. I know he comes up empty there, but earlier in the season, he would have settled for that little 12-foot baseline push shot. And this time, he dribbled hard to the basket where he had an opportunity to get a higher percentage shot or draw some contact. Under three to go, opening half. This is where under three, under four, when the Lopes have been good all year long, really separating themselves from your, your opponents and taking the momentum to the locker room. We'll have to see if they can do it tonight against a determined Aggies team. Well, here, drives, stops, pushes back out. Kai leads it. The ball move, Gillian takes it from Tillman. Lakai throws up the three at the buzzer and it makes it. Wow, he just threw that thing in there. <laughs> he got kind of a, a funky looking shot from yeah, distance, but somehow, like you said, he gets it in. He's got, what, two tonight wow. now? He had two last night to start the basketball during that 13 to four run. So they, the Lopes have not put a, 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 a clamp on this kid whatsoever. He's having himself a ball game and they need it because McCants, who was so strong last night, Hasn't done anything in just five minutes of action. He's got 2,000 zero points, and that, that just caps a 7-0 run by the Aggies. Yeah, Ropes had a little bit of a run like that. Yeah, they had a little, like it was 11 to four. Uh, run pushed their largest lead in that one right there. Let's take a look and see if this ball gets out of his fingertips before the red light comes on. Yes. I, I think he did. Didn't yeah, well, I'm looking at the basket at the far, far end. And here we go. Left. Oh. Yeah, I think That's I think close. it's gone. Yeah. Good bucket. Yep. Yeah, I love the officials going to the score table and taking a look at that one to, to make sure they get it right because obviously we know how big this game's going to be and determine who's going to be the top team in the Western Athletic Conference regular season. No standings mean everything once you get into the tournament. The difference between playing the second third place teams battling each other out killing each other and you have an opportunity to play the fourth place team that fit finishes in the tournament Tarleton State had a 10 point lead over Utah Valley it's now 63 58 with about 125 to go Tarleton State looking for their first conference victory oh you used to close that gap huh yeah and of course Utah Valley at 4-0 right behind the Lopes yeah just a half game behind the Lopes this would be big if uh, Tarleton could Pull out that victory for the Lopes. Get them one game free and clear. Aggies have nine assists on their 11 field goals. The Lopes four assists on their 12 field goals. Well, I've looked at them. They're still meeting and talking about it. Oh. No basket. They're waving oh, that off. Aggie fans aren't going to be happy with that. Well, they, they looked at it and studied it closer than we did. And they got the Exmo over there. We quite get to take a look at it like that. I, I don't know. I like to think that that was probably 
Could have gone, gone either looks way. Looks like a little something for the effort, you know. <laughs> it's a three-pointer, man. <laughs> give, give him one. Okay. Back to Labor. He attempts the three and makes it. By that is a uh, tough turnaround for the Aggies. A little six-point swing right there, yeah. wasn't it? One you didn't get, and Laver within, within about five seconds now all of a sudden makes that a six point turnaround. Inside of Lakai. Please catch there. Nice. Clayton Henry. Tillman guarded heavily. Top of the key. Finds a little bit of room. Turns. Often steps back. Looking to make a move. Goes left. Wyatt, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a battle that uh, Gabe's. Unfortunately, not winning right now. <laughs> it's a big time move, Barry. <laughs> yes, he, that's good D. Kinda, hey, that's an right excellent you. D by McLaughlin. Just better offense. Nine points now. <laughs> Doing a good job. What are you going to do? Just pat the guy in the back, say, I did everything I can. You're just okay. better than me on that possession. See if Gabe can counter it. Floater. Good. How about that, McLaughlin? I like that about this kid. Yeah. He said, okay, you made me look bad at one end, but I'm going to go back the other end. I'm going to give me the same ball where you got it, and I'm going to show you I can put it in the hoop, too. Lead is six for GCU. Rice. Gillian. Far side. Got some help from Tillman. Down in the corner. Henry. Off the mark. Rebound. Blackshirt. Uh, you know, Frere didn't get that ball, but he wiped out Tillman to make sure that Tillman didn't get it. Labor swarm back out. Dixon puts it on the floor in the paint. Back out. Frere, he'll drive. Left hand off the glass. Beauty. Wow, did he really attack that basket? He took that ball from outside the three point line and in a blink of an eye got all the way to the rack. 36 28. Here's that momentum I talked about. The Lopes finishing off the half in fine fashion. The ball over. The last bucket here. Eight point lead. The Lopes. Solid opening half. 11 on the shot clock. Eight. Dixon. Gonna wake up, up. Drive to the bucket. Off the mark. Rebound. Buzzer. Not sure what Mikey was thinking there. Did he have to think he had a lot more time? Well, Lopes really finished this half off nicely, being aggressive, attacking the basket, really making those points in the paint huge in this basketball game. I love that one that Oscar Frere down that left side. So the Lopes finished strong after a 7-0 run by the Aggies to come back and open up an eight-point lead on a 7-2 run to close out the half. Let's set it down to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. Well, Coach, you talked about the tough task to come up in a short turnaround against a tough team like the Aggies. How do you think your team responded tonight at tip-off? You know, it's, it's going to be a tough battle for 40 minutes. Uh, you know they're going to come out, and, and again, both teams have had runs. You know, we had our run right before half. They've had their runs and taken the lead. So, you know, we got to be ready for 20 minutes, and out of the whole series, you know, this needs to be our best 20 minutes of, uh, of the weekend. We saw it both last night and then again tonight, the down the stretch in both halves last night and then tonight. The team picking up the momentum, trying to continue to set that tone they start the game off with. What stands out to you in those final minutes of play? You know, we have to rebound the basketball. And, and I think a big thing is if they're offensive rebounding, then, 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 then they're the more aggressive team and, and they're being tougher. And we did a good job in the first half. We got to be able to do that again in the second half. All right, we wish you the best in the second half. Thanks for your time, Thanks. Coach. And right now, GC with the advantage, 36-28 over New Mexico State. Last night, the Aggies were aggressive on the glass, but so far today, the Lopes holding their own. We'll be back in just a moment with more on the Lopes Halftime Show. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Joel Embiid is unhappy. 
Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel M.B. Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> when the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. I'm Montana Lambton with Sean Miller Moore from Men's Basketball. He's got some tea on his teammates, so this is Love Likely. Most likely to fail their driver's test. I would say Chance is most likely to fail his driver's test. Yes. Not a good driver? I don't know, he just seems like he's just he's just a little off his rocker sometimes. Most likely to go to Chick-fil-A on Sunday. Definitely me. I've been on Sunday a couple times and it was closed and I was like confused. <laughs> Most likely to go on American Idol. It's probably me. You? You yeah. can sing? I can't sing, but I just fool around a lot and sing. You think but. you'd like make the cut? Mm, probably not. Most likely to have the best fit. Everybody can dress. But Oscar, Oscar's stylist, because I, I, he's my roommate. So I'm right. just, oh baby, I, you feel me? I see, you, I see his drip drop. You borrow all his clothes? <laughs> I don't borrow his clothes, no. no. But I, I see, he has, he has some, he has some swag. Most likely to be left on red. Most likely, <laughs> most likely to be left on red is probably Rashad. Rashad? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Rashad. <laughs> and who's most likely to be like walking down Lopes Way and just saying hi to everyone? Liam. Liam? 110%. Oh, he's so popular. Yes. Liam's definitely popular. What about you? Do people recognize you on campus? I think, I, I just feel like I'm not approachable because I, I don't know, like the, when it's bright outside, my eyes are always like, <laughs> and I'm wearing a mask, so like no one really wants to talk to me. I feel your pain, Sean. I too am smiling under this mask. Well, from masked up to lopes up, we all know that come game day, it is an experience here on the G, at GCU. And really, it takes a village to make it happen. And sometimes some of the biggest team players are the ones who don't find their names in the box scores. We're talking about those student managers who lost some serious hours to make tip-off happen. Take a look. Okay, yeah. Coming off. That's awful. Abjorn. Oh, oh, okay, all right. A little bit of Jeez. Jeez, buddy. Get up then. They did this poll, do you want Ale mic'd up or the managers, and the people voted for the managers. <laughs> these are tough. <laughs> what up, top 10? Huh? Can I buy those? Nah, these are, these are mine. I'm mic'd up, look, oh, look. Oh, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good. Hey, say hi to the people from Vallejo. Watch me clamp real quick. I swear I just saw a cutout move. I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. I can quote 90% of cars by myself. Sir! Oh, really, Ale? Is Preston get a mic? Oh. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First team. Oh, yeah! Hey, this is my song. All right, all right, back to work. The guys are saying you haven't been passing good enough. Ah! Oh, let's go! Yes, sir. Two yeah. shots. Was that even the right spot? Yes, sir! Is it Kane's post game? <gasps> Kane's is post game. Kane's is post game. 40 Kaniacs. Oh, no. Baby. We're not used to this American defense. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, never mind. We're gonna have to cut that. <laughs> it's cash money though. No, it's not. They bring the waters and the snacks. They're the first one to arrive at the court to get the players ready. The last to leave. Please those student uh, managers. All right. Well, we hope you are uh, hungry for more basketball talk because when we come back, Barry and Scott will break down first half final. At Tire Pros, we know your time is valuable. And spending time with family and friends is what really matters. Our customers are the core of our business. That's why we make buying tires and auto service hassle free. Our certified technicians will keep your car running smoothly. So you can spend your time the way that you want. Find a convenient location near you at tireprosofarizona.com. Hassle free guarantee. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. Lopes up by eight, 36 28 at the half. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you at GCU Arena. A lot more poised opening half. They, uh, they've been hitting the threes. They've, uh, they've done pretty much everything uh, that maybe they didn't. We didn't see really clicking in that opener last night. Got on the boards, got an advantage yeah. on the on the glass as well. Points in the paint. Vince did a good job. Uh, stayed out of foul trouble. The defense was good. Held them under 45% shooting in that first half. A lot of positives, uh, but they have to continue. Yep, no doubt about it. Arizona Leadership Foundation brings our first half highlights. Javon Blackbeard Jr., six points. Yeah, six points, but he was spectacular. Really running this ball club, getting them off to a nice start. I like that one right there. Just you know, losing a little, coming off that uh, weak side, right side there. I love the dump down inside to his big guy. And this one here was because he just kind of wrapped, rubbed his defender off of the backside of Midgard and was aggressive. And then once again, those two worked really well tonight. Midgard with eight points, four boards. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. Rebounding margin in favor of the Lopes. Points in the paint, as you mentioned, they've been getting into the paint so far. And the shooting is respectable. Yeah, I mean, I thought they did a really nice job mixing up the inside the outside game uh, some offensive rebounds. They did a much better job controlling their own defensive glass uh, was huge as well. But closing out on those outside shooters, mixing up the uh, the man to man in the zone defense, really confusing those uh, three point shooters for the Aggies, just four of 15. Lopes have all the right moves here in the opening half. We'll see how the second half <laughs> plays out I'm right. I don't after know what this. you call that dance. I don't know either. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment, walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Perf Jones, by your side. The temperature scanning kiosk from Pacific Office Automation is an easy to use attendant free device that quickly checks a person's temperature anytime, anywhere. You can now provide peace of mind at schools and universities. 
grocery stores, restaurants, nursing homes, medical clinics, sporting events, offices, private gatherings, and more. Look to us to help you reduce the risk and be safe. Visit PacificOffice.com. Pacific Office Automation. Problem solved. Welcome back. We're just getting ready for second half action here at GCU Arena. Right now, Labor helping the Lopes to a 36-28 lead over the Aggies. Lopes looking to make it two in a row over New Mexico State right now. Labor and Midgard leading the way with eight points to their name. And Javon Blackshirt not far behind with six points. But will they have all the answers for the Aggies in the second half? You don't have to wait long. We'll be right back with more College Hoops here on Box 10 Extra. Get that quick snack, because we'll be right back. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts, but that doesn't mean you can't. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order canes with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. Sanderson Ford presents GCU Basketball. And it's a great one here tonight at GCU Arena in Phoenix. The Lopes leading by eight over New Mexico State. Glad you could join us. As Alessandro Labor had a fine opening half. Yeah, Labor was good in this basketball game. He did a nice job of really mixing up the outside game. And I love this one right here. Didn't settle for the outside shot. Realized he had a 40 point pound advantage and just pounded down low. Got that little jump hook to go. A little pick and pop game has been strong this weekend. Getting out behind that three point line, getting himself back on balance. Three for six from the field, two for three from behind the arc showing why he's one of the GCU's all-time leading scorers. What do you got, number three now, right? Yep, number three. 223 behind Josh Braun. Although, we got to keep an eye on Labor's two personal fouls. Midgard has two personal fouls. McCants saw limited action, only five minutes in that opening half. He's got two personal fouls for the Aggies. You wonder, he, he played so hard last night, picked up those early fouls. I, don't know if Coach Jan sent him a message or if he just was kind of out of gas. It seemed like the team had a spurt they were playing well, and, he, and Coach Jans has a tendency to just ride that out hand. So you know he's going to be looking to make up for some lost time riding that pine that first half and look out to be aggressive here in the second. There a turnover right there to begin things. I know Coach Jansen wouldn't be happy with that. No, no athletic way. hands by the guys in the white shirts caused that deflection, caused that turnover. Car shot drives, steps back, He's up top, to his right, Dixon finds Labor. Labor swarmed by two, kicked out, Freyer looks for three. Bouncing around, pulled down by Lacan, quickly up for Gilliard. Can't, Clayton Henry. Gilliard, pauses. That's Rice to come out. Shut that down. He'll take it himself. Off balance shot. Oh, kind of a late whistle. I think they got Blackshirt Jr. on that drive, and Gilliard just kept putting the pressure, pressure. And the, the, the whistle came a little bit late. Probably the correct play is 
Blackshirt was really had a lot of body on that drive, but Blackshirt Jr. is doing a good job really frustrating Gilliard into some tough plays. Not a lot on that one. <laughs> Blackshirt Jr., I'm like, dude, what do I got to do to stay in front of this 5'10 speedster and not pick up a foul? Maybe a little, as they say, ball don't lie in the, uh, in the, at the NBA because he didn't commit the foul, and Gilliard missed that front end of that free throw. His numbers on the season there, 10 and a half points, 10.6. Only 33% shoot for a guy that uh, has a good-looking shot, just hasn't been able to get in the rhythm yet this disjointed season that the Aggies are enduring here. Two of four from the line, and two errant free throws by Gilliard. There was a 21 free throw differential, and Blackster puts it in. Yeah, he's got kind of Gilliard guessing that he's going to be coming off of that screen, and then Blackshear just does a little trick inside out dribble and takes it away from the screen and goes hard to the rack. Ten point GCU lead. McCants looking to move on Midgard. Back out. Picked off by Dixon. Another turnover early on. Dixon takes it in off the window. How good has Dixon been in this series? Phenomenal. Just getting steals, using his wheels, getting out in transition. Lopes enjoying their largest lead of the game, up 12. Back from Lakai, McCants puts up the three. That's off the mark. I knew that wasn't going in before he shot it. Yeah, he's really he's been at a rhythm yeah. all night long, and that's the last thing you want to do to try to get yourself going is to shoot a, a three when you're just as cold as ice. Well, you kind of wonder about this is the first conference play, first back to backs. They have limited action, the Aggies. I mean, the Lopes have had look, this is three series, I believe, with, with back to backs. Midgard in and out. Look at this one more time here by uh, Blackshirt. This is the one he just goes hard to the rack and kind of catches Gil Gilliard le le leaning the wrong way. And then I love that one by Mike Dixon getting out, playing that pass in lane, and having the speed to speed down the floor and, and lay that one off the glass before the defense can recover. He's working hard <laughs> just a couple minutes into this one. He's going to have to get a blow. Yeah, the Lopes 4 0. Fast break advantage, long distance. Oscar Freyer. Oh, Freyer. Wow, he knocked in some threes on this series as well. 7 0 run to begin the second half for GCU. Rice. Going to move on Freyer. Swarm there. Underneath. Again, another turnover. Again, using those hands, getting those deflections. Labor, Midgard, Blackshear, all with eight until then. Labor puts it in his ten. Wow, Blackshear spoon feeding his big guys. That was beautiful. He splits the double team with a little low dribble, gets inside, forces the big to challenge, and then slips it over to Labor, who does a nice little jump hook with his back to the baseline, just flips it in over his left shoulder, and knocks it down. This one more time. Split the defenders. Get inside here, cause the big to come over and help, and then Labor just does the rest. Look at Blackshear move. All alone down low, 16-2. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they have really left uh, New Mexico State in that locker room. Coach Chan's going to be chewing his team a new one right now because they haven't had the energy to match what the Lopes have brought to the floor here in the second half. Getting smoked right now. Look at that. Five and oh, atop the conference are the Lopes. Utah Valley loses to Tarleton. And what I'm reading, Tarleton led probably close to start to finish in that one. They led by 10 when I was checked in on, on the score, and they pick up their first Western Athletic Conference victory under Billy Gillespie. Well, that, that's you know, that's the problem. Utah Valley got fat and happy last night thinking we're playing a team that's 0-5. We just smoked them last night, yep. and we're going to face them again, they, and they let their guard down. I mean, obviously, the Lopes aren't going to let their guard down against the Aggies, but it is human nature. You get a win against the team, come back and thinking it's a given that you're going to beat them the next time out, and you've got to respect the game on Utah Valley. Obviously, was not ready to play mentally tonight, and Tarleton took it to them.
Yeah, well, the Lopes can tell you they need to respect the Billy Gillespie coached basketball team. Utah Valley paid the price tonight. For every three point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will be making a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Purple out of GCU Arena. Barry Vitale, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here. Yeah, I got that memo. I got, I'm rocking my purple tie tonight. <clears throat> purple. purple. Pen. There you go. You got something on there. Purple on last night. Start. Now let's see what the Lopes do here. Now they, they're enjoying a nice lead here. They fall back into their man-to-man -man defense. Can they stay as active as they were, playing big, playing long, getting those deflections, getting those steals here for the next five minutes of this basketball game? They can really drive a wedge into the heart of this Aggies team if they can continue the same sort of momentum here for the next five to eight minutes. Keep the pedal on the floor, right? Absolutely. Up high, look at, oh, man. <laughs> oh, we just talking about putting the pedal of the mat on Gilliard, who hasn't done much in this series, steps out from about 28 a feet. Lot of loft in that and shot. knocked it down. Midgard. Nice job by Midgard not taking that shot. He went to that trap, tried to get the Lopes to play a little faster, maybe get one of the bigs to take a shot they don't want to take, and he didn't, he didn't settle for it. That's the guy you want to shoot. Oscar Freyer, Midgard picked up the rebound. Oh, it doesn't go. Didn't put enough on it. You no, know, I like that, though. Getting that glass on the weak side. Long shot versus a long rebound. He was right there to gobble it up. Kept it high, just couldn't get it back down. Careful, wide open look for three. They could get back into it quickly. On the ball is Gilliard. Gilliard getting an offensive rebound. Now he's got the race match. Gonna happen off of Freyer's fingertips. Well, all those offensive, you know, defensive job that they did on the glass, now they come out here and they do on back-to-back -back possession, do them some offensive rebounds. Might be some good timing with this uh, media timeout. We'll be right back. Lead is 14. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries. Not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones, on your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. You guys, I really obviously enjoyed the results, I'm going to admit it, of last night's game, but it was really great to also listen to the post-game remarks by both coaches. I think right now we know the world is facing so much with this pandemic, and um, we all just want everyone to be healthy and safe, but we also kind of crave that old normal we used to know. And it was really great listening to both the coaches talk about just getting ready for these rivalry matchups, getting ready for a big game like this. They said for the first time in a long time, it felt a little more quote unquote normal for them. Coach Jan said he had the nerves getting his team ready for yesterday. And Coach Drews talked about walking into the gym and just feeling like, oh yeah, this is college basketball again. So hopefully, you know, we can all hope the tide is turning, but it was great to see both of those coaches feeling that last night. No doubt about it. Great, uh, good great energy action. in here. I love the band, the dancing team, and the cheerleaders, and the Havocs. That's fun. 6-0 run here by the Aggies, and nice execution off of that timeout. Yeah, it was nice execution on the other side, though. Lopes, lucky they didn't turn the basketball over yeah. there. They're getting a little sloppy here, yep. not to fit in the three-point line. Waver for three. Not going to happen. Routes 
Yeah, Frere shots Shorty and shoots a three. Labor misses a three. You can't fall low with that three-point shot because you knocked a few down in the first half and here to start the second half. Now they go inside for another bucket. Makai, 8-0 run here. Yeah, they were just up, what, 18? Uh, 17, rather. Now it's down to a nine-point advantage for the Lopes. Coach Drew wants a timeout, and he got it. <laughs> just before the turnover, I think. So the Lopes already have 26 points in the paint at 26 last night. But they need to regain that form down low. A philosophy for sure, right? because they've gone outside now and start banging away outside. You see last night, offensive rebounds, New Mexico State was just a beast yep. on that glass. 17 to three advantage, but tonight, Lopes has done a better job on their defensive glass. And they've been doing the job, getting the initial stop, and then going and getting that board, holding low in the Aggies. Excuse me, to only five points. They are not the Lobos, they are the Aggies. They, yeah. Not going to win a lot of favor on Las Cruces. No, no, I read, uh, no, <laughs> the uh, uh, stats that the New Mexico State put out, they, they made sure to let me know that they are not <laughs> the Lopes. Uh, the Lobos, rather. Uh, I thought it was funny. Whoever wrote their their um, stat sheets, yeah. the, the game, note. game notes. Thank you. Uh, they put about five paragraphs on there and how <laughs> they want to be called New Mexico State or NM State <laughs> or the Aggies, and they are not. We are not them, and they are not us. No doubt about it. UTRGV, February five and six. Then back here against California Baptist, and Jared Martin. Ah. Uh, it's back on the road at Seattle, February 26th. What a welcome is Jared Martin going to get when he comes back here with, with California Baptist? How about Dixie and California Baptist tied at 63? For Dixie State and Tarleton pick up their first conference wins tonight. Let's hope. Trailblazers. Dixon. Sean Miller Moore. Back to Dixon. Open look for three. Short. Miller Moore. On. Hustle. Nice job. That was some hustle. And you know, sometimes they say that the hustle's a skill. Well, he definitely showed off his skill on that one. He chased that ball down to the coffin corner, and grabbed it. Another offensive board. Eight. Miller Moore. Four. Three. And Miller Moore's chart. Okay, we got three outside shots that haven't found the range, and now this turnover by Miller Moore after the offensive rebound. I love the offensive rebound, but they gives it up there trying to get a little too aggressive by going into the painted area. Labor in for McLaughlin. Yeah, Coach Drew coming back with his starting five. He realized that the the bench, the success they had in that first half with the 10 points. He wasn't really giving it to him here in the second half, so he could right back to his starters as this lead has been trimmed now to single digits. In the corner, Freyer. Ryan and Pan push back out to Gilliard. Yeah, they went back to that uh, kind of that matchup zone defense. Really frustrated the Aggies last night for a stretch. In the corner, Jabari Rice. Good. Sure, what the call is. It looked like a three point Jabari shot. Jabari Rice call. Is it called for flopping? Yeah, that, that's a new rule that uh, can assess the a warning to a offensive player who flops on a call. That was, uh, a, that was a little. I mean, 11 0 run, though. Aggies. Aggies are getting it done. Yep. Just when the Lopes thought they were going to you know, be able to put this one, we talked about having that five to eight minute stretch where they really needed to stay aggressive. They didn't and allowed the Aggies to come back into this game. And where do you need it out. When you need a bucket, where do you go? The best field goal percentage shooter in the nation, shooting over 76%, dropped one on right hand hook. And three by Clayton Henry. The scoring drought was. 304 and counting for GCU before the Midgard bucket. Blackshire turning underneath Midgard. What a sweet feed by Blackshire in traffic. Spoon feeding his bigs, whether it's Laver or Midgard, 
Blackshirt Jr. is feeding the bigs now. 22 points and nine boards for the big guys, Laver and Midgard. Lead is 10 in the corner. Henry back out to Gilliard. Inside to Tillman. He was a spark there for a while, Tillman. We haven't heard much from him. Gilliard stops, pops. Not there. Loose ball. Pulled down by Blackshirt. Tillman. <laughs> Those guys are down there fighting just the way he voiced it. A nice job by Tillman. He goes back in there. You said he had been hurt from him for a while, and he went back in there and gets hit a tie up. And I know it won't be a result in them getting the ball back, but next possession, when they if that happens again, then it'll go back over to the, the Aggies. So nice job by Tillman going in there and being aggressive. A little press here. Midgard comes back. Yeah, Lopez did a good job handling that full court pressure by the Aggies last night, which especially towards the end of the game. And Blackshirt found Dixon, who found prayer for a nasty dunk. Beating Midgard in traffic. Got held underneath. Giving up too many kilos underneath to the big fella. Had to grab him by the forearm there. Trying to poke that ball away. Just the third team foul on the Aggies, though. I remember last night was a we were in the double bonus, I think, both teams with about 18 fouls in the first six minutes of that game last night. Tonight they're letting them play. And maybe just the guys are out doing a better job playing without foul units. Blackshirt. Near side, Dixon. Looked at Midgard. Now Freyer. Up over the top. Freyer with a nice pass. Midgard kicked out. Labor. Floater. Not going to happen. Midgard trying to climb up on it. Midgard loves it because that's a big guy down there doing his work early, getting on that offensive glass. 11.52 to go. Lopes up by 10. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Basketball at 11.50 to go. Travel on Midgard. You don't see the big fella get his, his uh, shoes tied up too much nope. down there, but that particular time, good job defensively by the Aggies. Forced the big fella into a travel underneath. Big trade, Cardinals fans. Stafford to the Rams for Goff. Two first, future first round picks and a third round selection. Go to Detroit. What? 
trying to golf for Stafford? Yep. Okay. Under 11 and a half to go. Gillian in the corner. C.J. Roberts at the buzzer, in and out, but the rebound oh, underneath. No, Clayton Henry didn't get a body on Henry. He comes oh. down that right hand side now, and who's watching? Get a turnover, one in an offensive putback on the other, and all of a sudden that lead is down to eight. They got him where they want him. Lip guard. Let him run out to that big lead. Lopes got a little complacent, more than a little. Right on the shot clock, bounce pass. Oh, foul. They get lucky it was a foul. Well, the they did get a foul, didn't I don't know if it was Midgard or Labor down oh, yeah, underneath getting ready to slam that one home. Look at this one down the other end here. Just got no body whatsoever. They got three black shirts going to the basket against two white shirts. You lose that battle every time. Man, not every time, but most of them. Now, this is where they got to get sharper here. They got to execute a little bit better down on this offensive end. Now, Blackshirt Jr.'s done a nice job spoon feeding some bigs, but outside of that, they haven't gotten much offensive in this second, this, well, the last five minutes of the second half. Blackshirt, step back. Three. No. Picked up by the Aggies. Oh, Jabari Rice. That's an offensive foul, Jabari Rice. He wanted to kick the ball ahead, but his buddy oh, had his back to him, so he just let the ball bounce on the floor, then he wiped out Mikey Dixon trying to go for the ball. Actually, it was Frere, I think, tries to go for it here, and he just wipes out Frere. Like, <laughs> wait, let me hip check you out of the play. Lose the ball there? Yeah, he oh, was going to okay. double dribble it, so That's he right. knew he couldn't pick it up again. At that point, he just <laughs> takes Frere out. Like he was body checking him into the glass. That's a hockey move, Barry. You should recognize that. Yeah, he took him out. Five turnovers in the game for Jabari Rice. The Wolves are one of six in the second half from three point land. Dixon puts it on the floor, a little floater. Good. Not sure if the shot clock was reset properly on that one, but anyway, with just about three or four ticks details, on the clock. Details. Dixon, once again, Kid's been so aggressive, putting that ball on the floor and getting it below the letters and being aggressive. Oh, Labor. Yeah, don't don't wake, don't let the cats wake up. No, nope. three on Labor. He was good last night. He seems like he's out of gas. I don't know if this team is used to playing in back-to-back -back games at zero points tonight. <laughs> he, push, he, he gets pushed out of the Lopes huddle. They're trying to huddle and get their defense assignments, but Cantz tried to stick his his beard in there, and Lopes had no wanted no part of it. Shoved him right out of there. Cantz, just a drive, twist, turn underneath. Aggressive. Well, we talked about don't wake up McCants, and you see how athletic he is with that spin move. And then Made he gets down there and gets that body contact. All he wanted to do was get these defenders down here in that restricted area and get that body contact on those on those two bigs. You could have called it probably on either one of them. And now, unfortunately, he's going to go to an opportunity to get himself to the line. Remember I talked about him shooting that three-pointer to try to get himself go. going. That's not how you do it. How you do it is driving the ball to the bucket like that, getting yourself a layup or an opportunity to go to the foul line. This could be spelled trouble here for the Lopes if this wakes this big beast up. Down to single digits now. He can play some really mean basketball when, it's, when he's focused and energized, and that might be just enough of a taste to get him going. Eight-point Lopes lead, both Midgard and Labor with three personal fouls. It seems like the seconds are coming up. This clock awfully slow. This has been the long, it was like the longest ten and a half minutes in the history of the uh, conference. Ooh, tenacious D, got to get up. Prayer. Barely. Just about to, about to beat the timer there by about a second. Now the Aggies definitely put it into another gear here. And the Lopes do the same. And Midgard battle underneath. Freyer with the three. Not there. Midgard with the rebound. Fresh 20. Back to Blackshirt. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Well, we, 
right? We talked about a flop off of a, yeah, an offensive on. play, come and I, I don't know why that one wouldn't have been called a flop. But Labor yeah, down there establishing on. himself on the block against a smaller defender. And as soon as he touches him, he just drops right. like, he, like a ton of bricks. Oh. Coach Drew's not happy with it, and unfortunately, that's the fourth now on Alessandro wow, Labor with right. still nine minutes to, and six seconds to play. He's going to have to spend some oh, come extended on. time come on. on the on the uh, Anybody pine. watching that, come on. You're laughing, I know, but I mean, that's smart play, I guess. Gilliard went in there, tried to get some more contact. He saw what McCants was able to get away with. Gilliard tried to go down there and get some contact and get himself to the free throw line as well. And officials weren't, weren't giving him that, that body contact that he and Blackshear had on that play. Frayer out, Dixon out. McLaughlin's in, Sean Miller Moore. Yeah, Sean Miller Moore, McLaughlin. Uh, and have to do better than they did when they had their first rotation here in the second half. Blackshear got that rebound. McLaughlin down to mid-guard. Mid-guard looking to move. Big right hand and in for Asbjorn mid-guard. Uh, he was down there and it's good solid defense and the second defender came over to try to block that shot. He was still able to flip that in for his 14th point. We have a ball game. He's going to yeah. try to work on a double double. He's got eight boards to go along with those 14 points, Barry. McCants takes it from Jabari Rice. CJ Roberts drives, cuts, slashes, left hand, and in. Wow, was that beautiful? That was beautiful. Yeah, give credit where credit is due. I think McLaughlin came over at the end to try to wipe that one away, and CJ Roberts was not going to be denied. Put that ball in his left hand. It was just a blur going to the basket. Not sure. Trying to move on Rice. Inside, McLaughlin turns, shoots. Good! Nice execution, good ball movement. Give McMillan a lot of credit there, finding his buddy right there in the middle of the basket. McLaughlin does a nice job, just turning, firing. No hesitation whatsoever. They needed that basket. Roberts, again, in the paint, high off the glass. McCants tried to get a hand on it. Midgard pulled it down. Nine for Midgard now on the glass. Blackshear brings it up. Under seven, seven and a half to go. Off of the foot. Race is on. That's going to be a turnover because that was off of Blackshear's foot. Crowd doesn't like it, but that's the right call. So, timeout on the floor. The lead is 10, but it's been precarious here in the second half. As uh, the Bigs have gotten into a bit of foul trouble, certainly with uh, Labor with four. Here's the... Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Maybe, maybe that went off McCants uh, heel. Let's what see one more time. Yeah, off of McCants' foot, he got away with one. Well, I think I think the Lopes got the beneficial not, not getting a three-point shot. Uh, that went down for the Aggies earlier. So maybe, like you say, after 40 minutes, those things do have the tendency to even themselves out. This game, you know, you know the Aggies are not going to go home quietly uh, as they try to, you know, split this two-game series. Uh, foul trouble a little bit. Uh, how do you see this game here play, playing out in the last uh, seven tell and a half you what, minutes? what, I got sweaty palms. Yeah. Even when they were up 17, I was worried. I knew that five to eight minute stretch when they had that 17 point advantage, they had to play better basketball than they did. They didn't get it done. Gave the Aggies some life now. They've cut this thing back, but they had cut it under to uh, under double figures. Now the Lopes got to regain. They got some guys that come on off the bench because they got some foul troubles on the big. Lawson hits a big bucket. McMillan had, gave him the pass, so those guys started to have to play well off of that bench here and shore this up for the next five to six minutes if they're going to get this win. Yeah, Ashmore and Midgard, though, stepping up with some buckets down low. He sure has been big, 14 points because he's been a power player around that bass. He's had a nice touch, and uh, I love the footwork on this one right here because he's going against a guy that's his size, 270 pounds, not like he's playing against Bethesda or Benedictine. He got some guys with some beef down there on him, and he's still shooting a high percentage. As he keeps the ball high, he plays within himself. He's not afraid to pass out of the double team, reestablish position, and then get the ball back down low. But the Lopes plus six on the boards right now, and a plus 16 in the paint's been all the difference in this one. You see the leading Lopes tonight. Labor 10 points and four of nine from the field. And talked about the, what the big fella is doing. Uh, on the other end with those 14 points and nine boards. 
They got a good do it down there. First, when they when they had both of these guys, I was worried how Labor was going to get his points if Mitgar was down there being a space eater on the block. Where was he going to play from? But Mid uh, Labor showing the ability to play on the left block while Mitgar's on the right block. Plus, we know Labor can step outside and shoot the three pointer. We saw Dixie State try to hold on there, pick up their first conference victory. Inside Tillman. Puts it on the floor. Finds McCann. She's shut down by Midgard. Out of bounds. Right, double team and McCann's trying to keep him out of rhythm to get himself going. And he's just not used to playing against guys of that side, that speed. They double team him and he's not able to execute the pass out of that double team. And they're back with his full court trap. Work through it. McLaughlin. Back to Blackshirt. Give the coaching staff a lot of credit. Well, the guys in the black shirt have not been effective at really creating a lot of turnovers with that full court press. Now they've done it down here in the half court set, but not really off of that full court track. Blackshirt drives. Floater off the glass and goes in. Blackshirt coming up strong here tonight. Well, I was talking to his daddy in the parking garage after the basketball game, and he was proud of the way they played last night, got that big win. He's going to be super proud if he can go back to back the way his son's playing tonight. 10 points, 4 assists for yeah. Javon Blackshirt and Jr. 4 rebounds as well, Barry. Long distance, off the mark. Sean Miller Moore went up for it. Oh, Trying to step in there and create a turnover, get that charge. And Miller Moore does a nice job getting to the outside of this, his shoulders there and getting that foul, but just a 16 foul. For the Aggies, so he side out of bounds. But look at that one more time by Blackshirt. Gabe McLaughlin just gives him that little dribble handoff, and he does the rest. Dokes in the game. McGillier. McMillan. Sean Miller Moore. Wink. Drive, trying to drive baseline, shut down there. Midgard up high. Blackshirt, oh, he's looking for Midgard. Turnover by the Lopes, under six to go. Makai, Noakes. Stop. Doesn't go. Well down by Sean Miller Moore. Oh, I got Miller Moore pushing underneath. He can't believe it. Oh, this guy here. Yeah, you're up 12. You got under under six to play. You really want to do a good job of keeping this team off the free throw line. And you know now with uh, the 16 foul, the Aggies will be shooting free throws the rest of this game. Play without fouling. Get them off the three-point line. Keep them out of the paint. Make them shoot tough twos the rest of the way. You can win this ball game and limit them to one shot. He's on defense. For five and a half to go. Dobes, McCants puts up the three. Not going to drop. Frere with a little extra high to make sure he got that one. Good stop. When seven, the Lopes needed it. Seven of 26 beyond the arc of the Aggies. Blackshirt. And you got to think, I mean, they're not the greatest three point shooter, but you got to think those are just tired legs playing in a back to back. Yeah. McCann so certainly right. has not been his, his normal no, self. No, not at all. Back to Midgard. Turns. Doesn't go. But I like that shot, though. That's a good shot on balance. You can get back defensively and not get burdened on a fast break. I mean, really even, the call. Yeah, the empty possession, but still good execution of the offense. Henry off the mark. Yeah, make a play out there. That, <laughs> those shots right there, contest the shot, don't foul, and then go get the board. They're not going to be making too many three-pointers with the tired legs that they got to be here after the minutes that they logged last night. And then this late in the ball game here. Good from three-point land. I'm not sure if they're, they're going to count, count that it? or not. They might say that one might have come. They wiped out Gabe McLaughlin on that screen before the shot went up. 
either way, the McLaughlin's either going to the line for free throws or they're going to count the free throw and uh, count the three pointer and give them one, give them one from the free throw line. Let's see if it, when this looks like the foul right, Dixon may still have that ball in his right hand. They're going to look at it. Looks like it. Shocker. Really, look at that. Dribble that went off on the cancel out. Looks like it happened before the shot. Ran. I would have thought so. That was pretty obvious. But I, I, I get going to the going to the monitor to get it right. We yeah. talked about big game. Twelve points is you know still doable in 14 and a half. And Minutes and 16 seconds. They want to make sure that they get it right, and it'd be huge if they do count this bucket. How about mid guard though? We got five double doubles coming into this one tonight. I believe he's one rebound away from getting another double double. He's had six games where he's missed double doubles by just one rebound. And the kid's been a player. When they first signed him, they were all excited about him. I'm looking at his <laughs> look at his numbers, going. I don't get it, <laughs> but now I see why they were so giddy about this young man being able to not only just eat space underneath, which is what they wanted for in rebounding, this kid has been a stud scorer as well. So here we go, 4 16 to go. Both teams huddling up, waiting the word here, so. Really want Brady, huh? It's just because he's the old guy. Is that no, what you're thinking? thinking? You know, Bruce Arians, you know, Cardinals coach. I was never a big fan. I, I'll be honest. I'm no. gonna say, I was never a big fan of risk it, no risk, risk it, no, no biscuit. biscuit. Yeah. Eh, like sometimes, yeah. I, I, I thought I we lost more games bit. than we won with that no risk it, no biscuit. I'm a hater. Though. You know, a little, you know, I'm a Brady hater, right? How about Aaron Rodgers with a 12 pack in the back of the pickup truck, huh? That. What, what happened? There was a photo of Aaron Rodgers in the back of a pickup truck. Why oh, did not see that? Was that like a 12 pack? After the loss to I know, I Tampa? Know, the, the other day. Earlier in the season, I guess, is what the report was. But he validated it. That's true Wisconsin fashion right there, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Cheese and beer. <laughs> so we know it's McLaughlin. The uh, foul was called before the shot by Dixon. So that was a one and one. This is the second end of the one and one. And McLaughlin. That he was, likes that guys was big on the right line, there. right? Before earlier in the game, on that flagrant, flagrant tell foul, he, he didn't have anybody alongside him. So. Throw, throws a the, the shooter off. Yep. All right, now lock in now here and don't let him shoot the three. They did. Makai's off the mark and Midgard is here. Solid again. Got that double double now with that tenth board for to go along with those 14 points. We talked about how the bigs needed to play well big in this series. I think certainly have. They didn't get as many boards as they probably would have wanted just to combine 11 points. But tonight, they're getting it done. Lawson in the paint. Bounce pass. Blackshirt puts up the three. <clears throat> Not going to happen. McCann's backed out. Midgard picked up that rebound. Three and a half to go. A sense of urgency from these Aggies. They got under three and a half to play, and they just don't seem like they really want to get quick shots. I and mean, they burned oh, 15 open. seconds off the shot clock oh, there. Hey. Oh, Freyer with the block. Henry. Where did Freyer come from? Oh. It looked like it was going to be an easy putback on the offensive board from Henry, and Freyer had grabbed a big rebound a couple trips prior, and then comes over and gets that swat. That's up so high. Game stops envious of that one. So too, it's, I like that. So they, 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 they did game stop. <laughs> those, those, uh, uh, there's a little controversy. Yeah, there. they did them wrong. Whoa, long distance at the bumps. Well, the TikTokers drove that stunt price through the roof and then they shut them down. 59 45. Look at that. 243 to go. Can the Lopes sweep this two game set? We shall see. 
When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Lopes are up 59 45, 2 43 on the clock. They snap that 31 game regular season conference winning streak by the Aggies, dating back over two years with last night's eight point victory. Yeah, they've done it with Adina Knight. I, you know, talk about how good the Aggies are, number one in the country coming into this weekend series on defensive field goal percentage with the Lopes were in the top five as well. Well, they have shut these Aggies down tonight, holding just 37 percent shooting on the evening. Dixie State beats California Baptist tonight. So Dixie Tarleton. State and Tarleton both yeah. get their first conference victories tied. Welcome to the party. And that's good, you know, uh, gives the Lopes now a, what, a game and a half lead over Utah Valley. Well, got to four and one, Lopes. Well, I, I'm, I'm already putting this one in the win column. Yeah, I, I haven't seen, have not seen enough out of these Aggies energy level to prove to me that they're coming back from 14 down with two and a half to play. If something were to happen, folks. They lose this when you put it squarely on my shoulders. Even, right. with, even with that ill-advised foul on the offensive board there and sending them to the free throw line with a chance to score with the, the clock stopped. I'll take all the responsibilities for this. Wow. Admirable of you. Labor back in the game. He's got four personal fouls. Rothen will take a seat. Yeah, but he's a vet. He, he knows how to play with uh, to manage the game, which is two and a half to go. Henry at the line. Greens both. Back in the ball game for the Aggies, number two, Johnny Tillman. Tillman back in. So it down to Kate. Well, guys, coming into this back-to-back -back game series, uh, Coach said that he really understood the importance of the series, especially for guys like Laver and Oscar, who have agonized over the Aggies for years. So, Scott, uh, if this should end, I'm not going to say it will end, if it should. I don't jinx things like some people. But what's it mean to players like that? I'm sure, obviously, in your collegiate career, you had those certain teams that, man, if they had your number, all you wanted was that W. Oh, Phil so sweet. Wait, absolutely. If you playing against a rival who knocked you out of the tournament, prevented you from going to the big dance two years in a row. You know, you've lost, you had lost eight straight games coming into this series against them. This could be party time tonight. That was a really heads up play by Freyer. But Aaron Ball going out of bounds. He pushed it in off of McCants. Freyer for three. Good! Good to see. We got the dunk that sealed it last night, the three-point shot right there. And if, you, if you, you didn't believe me that it was over, now do you believe me that it was over up 15 with under two to play? Kind of. This is the Aggies. Tillman. Oh. Put him in a blunder that 
Isn't that what you say? Yeah. You twisted them around. Yes. I mean, That's it's all about it. Yeah, I gave him, gave him a, a three-piece in a biscuit right there with that move. He was so good at getting by that 275, seven-footer. But I love that one there by Oscar Frick. No hesitation whatsoever. Give me the rock. I'm going to put it down and put the final nail in his coffin. Did it with the dunk last night. I'm going to do it with the three here tonight. Thank, you. Thank you for coming. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Drive home safely. Aggies last back-to-back -back whack losses February 15th at Utah Valley, February 17th at Seattle University during the 2017-2018 season. Last time the Aggies started conference play in the WAC, 0-2, was 2012-2013. Professor doing the, the dance moves yeah. down there with the uh, dance squad. Oh, well, he's direct the band. He knows all the dances as well. Yeah. Well, he is married to the dancer. What? Director of the dance band. Oh, get out of town. You didn't tell me that. I'm giving Come him on, man. He's been I'm here six it, years. I did not Do know that. Homework. I'm giving him too much credit then. He's probably been watching these moves at night at home. Black shirt. Under a minute and a half to go. Incredible. Wolves fans, can you believe it? Freyer. Off the mark. Getting a little greedy there. <laughs> yeah, what? that's what I was thinking yeah. too. You know, I, I, I like the open look and the confidence to shoot it, but did you really need it? <laughs> McCants, Gilliard in the corner. One minute, One minute remaining. remaining. McCants throws up the three. That doesn't go. Pushed out Blackshaw with the rebound. Player. Back over to Dixon. That's got to feel good for oh, oh, Mikey oh. Dixon. I mean, I know he's only been fans. two years, but he had that agony of getting beat twice by these guys last year. Mikey Dixon, Oscar Frere, Alessandro Laver. That, that, that's a good weekend. These guys put in the work. Wasn't always pretty, but even last night when they had it, you know, that lead evaporate in the second half, they stuck together. I think Paul Coro hit on that in, in our pregame show. These guys are, they believe in one another. And uh, they fought through that bad stretch, came back, got that victory, and Tonight wasn't always pretty, but again, found a way to make a run when they needed one and separated themselves from the Aggies. Whether the Aggies are tired or rusty or whatever, it, it still got to play the games. Most took advantage of their opportunities tonight. Coming into this game, the Aggies were 14 and two against the Lopes since the Lopes entered D1 play. Start to think about all those former Lopes players that. Face the Aggies. Dokes off the mark. McCants is underneath, puts it in off the window. Prayer to Blackshear. 24 and counting. Bounce pass. Labor. Foul. Yeah, what Coach Jansen? <laughs> he's not, back he's not off, backing is off. Is he? He's like, even if we don't get it this at night, we might need to, so, to work on our full, our full court trap for another basketball game when we may have an opportunity to win one. So, not only just a execution type situation, but a learning situation for his team. He knows he might need that trap to get him a steal later in the season. You know who I feel bad for? I don't feel bad for anybody. Well, I feel bad for every team now that faces the Aggies after this series. Oh, yes. <laughs> you think they're going to be fired up? They are going to be on a mission. I, I, I honestly will be believe that the Aggies won't lose a, a game the rest of this uh, Western Athletic Conference. And it's going to come down to these two teams again yeah. in the conference tournament. They're just a little rusty. Yeah. Didn't know how to play them back to back. Didn't have the energy. Didn't have the middle preparation. Whatever they did to get ready for this game did not work. They'll, they'll, they'll flip the script and they're going to get it right. They'll be ready in March. Absolutely. Don't take them for granted. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, isn't that all that matters anyway? 
big so they don't go undefeated, but they still get an opportunity to win the tournament and go to, to, go to Indianapolis again. So for the Lopes, this is nice. It gives them a good seed, gives them, keeps the momentum going to eight in a row now. Yep. And a lot of confidence that they can play with these guys. That's maybe more so than anything. Yes, they, they have I don't broken think you could, through that middle block. Yeah, I mean, they get punched in the mouth before, and I don't, I don't know if they had the confidence prior years. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for this team. I'm excited for yeah. the look at the future of this program uh, under Coach Drew. No doubt about it. And the Lopes are going to sweep this two-game series over the New Mexico State Aggies and remain unbeaten in Western Athletic Conference play with a 65-53 victory. It didn't have the drama uh, down the stretch as last night's game, but it certainly feels just as good. Pit guard with a six double double, 14 points, 10 rebounds. Blackshire with 11 points, seven rebounds. Yeah, the bigs were focused tonight. They had a nice inside out game working. They were passing the ball extremely well, big to big. Pick and rolls, pick and pops. Blackshirt Jr. was fantastic. Mike Dixon aggressive attacking the basket again. Got a nice bump off of their bench. Good team victory. 12 and 3 overall, 6 and 0 in the Western Athletic Conference. After Utah Valley loses tonight, they drop their first at 4 and 1. So the Lopes have a bit more cushion atop this conference as we. See the team gather for their post-game prayer. Yeah, you gotta feel like the confidence is at a utmost high level. Uh -oh. What happened? Well, I saw, I saw a big. Oh, we're getting okay. Never mind. Oh, okay, we're gonna get big guard up as a post-game interview, but we're gonna get Oscar Labor. Or Alessandro. What did I say? Oscar. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's <laughs> <laughs> down the key. Wait for Holly to get ready, but congratulations. I know last night the message was, you know, focus on the game. You couldn't celebrate. It was short-lived. But Coach is in here right now. I'm giving you permission right now. After all you have agonized over with the Aggies and during your career in a GC uniform, what does it mean to you right now to know that you and your team just got back-to-back -back wins? I mean, it feels great, you know, uh, it feels great. I, personally, I was 0 and 8 against them in my previous years, just you, so it just feels great to be out here and win back to back games against such a good team. Like, that would be do dominating the WAC since for the last 10 years. And you do know what the Aggies are capable of doing. They've had a, a difficult season so far with the schedule and COVID, but you know what they're capable of. So what was the key for the Lopes this weekend, where you guys went in there and showed that poise out on the court? I mean, our key for the game was to match their energy, to box them out, because, you know, they always grab over 10, 15 rebounds, offensive rebounds per game, and they did it last night as well. And our key was just make their energy, box them out, and just share the ball offensively. You guys are human, so when you come into a game like this, knowing what uh, the WAC has gone through New Mexico State in years past, was there a different feeling with these games? I mean, every game is important for us. Well, we don't know when the season is going to be stopped for coronavirus again, so every game is basically like a final championship game for us. So we just got to approach it like it's the last game that we're going to play with a, with a GCU uniform. Great thoughts, and you guys really are living in the moment and taking advantage each time you guys are out on the court. Right now, you are on top of the WAC with a 6-0 record. I know it's still early. I know you're not done. But what so far has been the key for the Lopes to achieve such success? The key for us in the last, since we started the season, was to rebound the ball and just play hard as we can. Thank you so much. It was fun Thank to you. watch this weekend. Thank you. All right, well, the Lopes get the 
job done tonight. Back-to-back -back wins over the Aggies. The final tonight here at GCU Arena, 65-53 over New Mexico State. We'll be right back to recap all of the action right here on Fox 10 x I would say to anybody considering maybe skipping graduation to spend a long time thinking about participating, I think it's a great opportunity to really take advantage of a moment that you only get once in your life. It, it's an opportunity to really experience something that highlights all the hard work that you've put in. Not very many people get to experience that in their life. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to do that and I think the memories that come out of that are just incredible. Herf Jones, by your side. When the going got tough, many people bunkered down. Dealerships turned to mundane sales online with impersonal deliveries, not Sanderson Ford. We chose to work even harder and provide more personalized service and value in our showroom. Or you can shop from home, buy from home, and we'll deliver. We've been delivering vehicles to our customers for over 65 years. Call Luis Gonzalez. Hey David, I'm just pulling in with your new truck. Wow, I'm blown away. Thanks for the personalized service. The Lopes are victorious over the Aggies on back-to-back -back nights, 65-53. The final score back at GCU Arena, Barry Butel alongside Scott Williams and Oscar Freire. Game one, a sweet dunk, and then a big three tonight. Yeah, I love this one here. This put the cap on the game last night. Lopes on a 6-0 run to finish that one off. Freire left no doubt that they were going to get that victory. And then tonight, they're up by 12. and. Blackshire, who spun, uh, spoon fed, <laughs> spoon fed all of his teammates tonight, gets that one over to Oscar Frere, who finds the bottom of the net from behind the arc. This was, uh, you know, the first game was kind of difficult, uh, the flow of the game, because a lot of fouls were called, a lot of whistles. This one, man, they, they came out poised. You, you kind of were worried that the Aggies were, you know, going to respond a little bit differently, but. The Lopes were equal to the task here, and uh, they weren't going to take it. Well, I think last night the Lopes were the team that got punched in the mouth early in the game, yeah. and it took that smack in the mouth for them to wake up. But uh, tonight it was the Lopes that came and really jabbed the Aggies in the mouth to start this basketball game in that first half. It took the Aggies a minute to catch their footing, and they caught the Lopes. But the Lopes just had a little bit more experience and how to play in these back-to-back -back games and continue to execute their offense when they had a little bit of a lull and they were able to pull away. And I don't think the Aggies, with the rust, not being able to play as yeah. many games because of, you know, of the COVID restrictions, they'll take, it's going to take some time for them to find their game in these types of scenarios where they got to play a Friday and a Saturday. Yeah, and, but you know they will. You, you know they will. You know they will. Our Copper State Credit Union player of the game is Ashbourne Midgard, his sixth double-double. The big Ash, we had the Midgard meter going. It, it broke at 18, but boy, did he start this game off with three, three straight buckets inside to get these Lopes going, just smacking them in the mouth down in that painted area. Lopes won that battle of that paint tonight, 38 to 24, because the big fellas were really working out, posing their well, putting those smaller players in the torture chamber, and even the larger guys had a tough time. Midgard using good footwork around the basket 14 points go along with 10 rebounds his sixth double double of the season he deserved the player of the game tonight on a 7 of 11 shooting continue his torrid streak through the Western Athletic Conference another player that we have to talk about is the guard at Javon Blackshear jr. he excelled here for 11 points yes yeah, spoon fed <laughs> all of his bigs tonight when he wasn't dropping in shots of his own. I love the way he was using his bigs in transition with those little drag screens and getting the floaters inside the lane, going away from screens at times as well, but just did a nice job running the show. He only got credit for a five assist. He certainly uh, contributed on getting a lot of guys involved that had opportunities to either get the bucket or get to the foul line, 11 points. Oh, and he got on the glass for seven rebounds as well, coming back in because it was all hands on deck to try to keep those Aggies off the offensive glass. You saw um, McMillan come in and get some boards, uh, as well as obviously Blackshirt uh, Jr. doing it. So nice job by those backcourt guys coming in and, and gang rebounding. Lopes out rebounding the uh, Aggies as well as uh, scoring, outscoring them in the paint as well as they pick up this big win. Let's revisit the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. Well, I, I think they, they mentally were sharp for, sharper for this game. Started it off very nicely, came out of the locker room as well in the second half with a nine 
0-0 run. And then, you know, they had to talk about the bench. Bench didn't score as many points, but I think they defended well tonight. Really held the Aggies to poor shooting numbers tonight. It was 37 at one point. I'm not sure exactly where it ended up down the stretch. But this is what we talked about. You know, what they did today is going to send shockwaves through this entire program and through this entire Western Athletic Conference. Because no you know there's some teams from Texas that are going to join in June that are watching what, the, what this, uh, New Mexico, uh, with this New Mexico State and this GCU game tonight and go, hey, these lopes are for real. There's the rebounding numbers, 34-30, points in the paint, 38-24, to 48% shooting for GCU. You gotta like that, and you know, a lot of that is is Blackshirt going down there and getting his big guys involved, and getting in a position where they can get high percentage shots. All right, that'll do it from here at GCU Arena. It's been a fun couple of nights, hasn't it? The Lopes beat New Mexico State back to back nights tonight, 65 to 53. Please join us again. Scheduled game Saturday, February 6th. GCU women's basketball against UTRGB. But until then, for Kate Longworth. Scott Williams and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful Saturday night.